novel, then short stops. Number six, Austin Bianchi. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome into Upperman High School, where we are set for this District 7 AAA matchup between the Upperman Bees and the White County Warriors. Tonight's broadcast presented by Nick's Restaurant. The Bees looking to remain undefeated in District 7 AAA play. The Warriors trying to knock them off for the first time since 2022. All the action, including a crouch team with Highlands Late Real Estate pregame show featuring the Star Swallows Insurance starting lineups and more to come from Baxter. When we come back, don't go anywhere. Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate just listed this new construction home located in the Brookstone subdivision. With 2,075 square feet, three bedrooms, and large walk-in closets, the main level primary bedroom has one of the best features ever. In addition to the hallway access, you can access the laundry room through the closet in the bedroom. The kitchen also features an island, a pantry, and stainless steel appliances. All cabinets throughout the house are soft clothes and have granite countertops. For more information, call Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate at 931-979-7145 or 931-526-9581. Always ask for Sonia Brown. Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Fire and Vine in Cookville is the Upper Cumberland's home for delicious Chicago-style pizza, beef, chicken, fish, and more. Located in Cookville's historic downtown district, Fire and Vine's food and atmosphere will keep you coming back for more. Take in stunning views with creative food and drinks on the rooftop. Fire and Vine is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Clint Connor is your local auctions expert. With full service from start to finish, the Exit Crossroads Auction Group are here to make the process easy for you. Visit CrossroadsAuctionGroup.com for more details and current auctions. Clint Connor, your local auctions expert, is proud to sponsor this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. The Crouch Team with Highlands Elite Real Estate proudly presents this gorgeous home on Cross Point Drive. Boasting four bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms with nearly 2,000 square feet, this home in the Prescott School District in Cookville could be your forever home. Call 931-979-1191 for more information and to schedule a showing, or visit chatandamycrouch.com. The Crouch Team with Highlands Elite Real Estate is proud to sponsor this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Delicious Pan Pizza is Domino's best kept secret. With locations in Smithville, Sparta, Livingston, All Good, and two in Cookville, Delicious Pan and Hand Tossed Pizza, Pasta, and more is never far away. Use the Domino's app to take care of your game day eats today. Domino's is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Welcome back. It's a District 7 AAA doubleheader on tap in anticipation of some nasty weather tomorrow night. They've moved up night number two to here, night number one, and game number one between Upperman and White County is set to get started here in Baxter, Tennessee. I'm Noah McCann, the call here on the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. Join in the press box with my friend Jacob Vinson. Caden Shanks is on the mound, getting warmed up here in the starting lineups for the White County Warriors who near this game at a record of three victories to six losses. They are 1-1 one one in District 7 AAA under head coach Tyler Thompson. Leading things off will be number six, Austin Pionki, the shortstop. In the second spot tonight is the catcher, Kaysen Seal. Batting third is the first baseman, Jack Everett. Batting fourth is the second baseman, Eli Smith. Batting fifth is the third baseman, Jonathan Boswell. Batting sixth, the starting pitcher tonight for the Warriors is Will Thomas. Batting seventh is the designated hitter, Cole Gentry. Batting eighth is the right fielder, Caden Siebers. And batting ninth is the center fielder, Sam Dykus. Not batting is the left fielder, Wyatt Diltz. 
He's being hit for by Cole Gentry. Their opponent on the mound, a bona fide Mr. Baseball candidate, one of the most talented players in the state of Tennessee, Caden Shanks, the right-handed Lipscomb signee, getting in his final warm-up pitches, and he has been simply sensational so far this season. A 1.4 earned run average, 2-0 on the year. He's made three appearances, started two games. He has one save, got that when he came in and slammed the door against Stewart's Creek. Late last week, he's pitched 10 innings and has 19 strikeouts, seven walks, allowed just two earned runs and three hits in those 10 innings. Caden Shanks, he's going to throw into the 90s with that fastball. He'll mix in the breaking ball and the changeup as well, Jacob, and he is by far the best pitcher White County has faced so far this season. Yeah, and he mentioned that 19 strikeouts through 10 innings have worked so far, averaging almost two strikeouts, over two strikeouts per inning, and he's going to be a little bit wild at times. We saw that in that Stoll Memorial game in that first game of district play where he hit a few batters. Of course, that was the night. It was really, really chilly up in Crossville. A little bit warmer here today. However, the wind is going to be playing a factor. Yeah. It is actually blowing into Shanks. So those breaking balls, which he is really good at, might break a little bit more and may be good for him. As the Swallows insurance starting lineups continue, the bees in the field will line up like this. Catching the balls and strikes behind the dish is rookie Allison. Alec Wilson at first base. The second baseman is Braden Green. Juju Yano bounces from second to shortstop with Shanks on the mound. Chris Worsing gets the start at third. Out in left field is Evan Huddleston and right it's Carson Holroyd and the center fielder is Justin Fallon. Moments away from first pitch tonight's broadcast is presented by Nick's Restaurant. We'll hear more from them as we go on through the evening. White County against Upperman. Upperman undefeated in District 7 AAA since April 22nd, 2022. White County much better under Coach Tyler Thompson here in year number two and they will look to see if they can put some pressure on him against the ace in the Upperman staff. Well, Coach Thompson was part of the team that got that last win against the Upperman team, an assistant with Cumberland County those couple of years ago, and now with a head coach the last couple of years here in Sparta. Austin Pionke steps in, the leadoff hitter, the shortstop, first pitch swinging here, fouls it back, and it's 0-1. 87 on the gun. Yeah, he'll hang out in those upper 80s for the most part. When we get into middle of April and that arm gets fully uncorked, he will be in the 90s. He will kiss it today as the 0-1 from... Shanks to Pionke is delivered home. This one's a fastball. Misses a tick upstairs. One and one. And you mentioned it came in to close the, the door against Stewart's Creek and had a few different pitchers going. That one really good game. They won it five to four and a big win for them. Yeah, it was a good game. We'll talk a little bit about that as the one one. That one just outside, says the home plate umpire. Close but no cigar. Two and one. Good take by Pionke. Yeah, they were able to defeat Stewart's Creek a day after falling to Friendship Christian, a good friendship team. And they threw a pitcher who was making his first start in a 2-1 pitch. This one sent out towards center field, but Justin Fallon, unlimited range, backs up and makes the catch for the first out of the game. For the Bees there, that friendship Christian, he was not getting out of the 60s with the fastball, and Upperman just could not time it up at all, struggled to hit the ball, and really struggled to string two hits together. Coach Shanks shifted the lineup a little bit for the Bees. They roared to life against Stewart's Creek, and as you mentioned, Caden Shanks slammed the door for Sparta. This isn't a big set of games. They've already mm -hmm. split one district series. That's the name of the game. You keep splitting series, you're going to be in it towards the top of the district as Shanks delivers the first pitch. This one's fouled off by Case and Seal. Well, and they're aggressive early on as well. Swinging first pitch on the first two batters of the ball game, trying to get out ahead. And we saw that with Stone Memorial as well. Aggressive against the pitchers that got out to a lead in both of those games. Were just unable to finish the, get, finish the game with the lead. Shanks delivers that fastball across for a strike, and he's quickly ahead here. Case and Seal 0-2. It's been a much better start with the at-bats this year for mm -hmm. White County. You'll see up and down the line that their averages have ticked significantly up this year as the 0-2 comes home, and that one swung on and missed for the birdies lounge strikeout. And Caden Shanks, he's throwing well early on in this ball game. Yeah, he is. He hasn't really been wild when we've seen that kind of early on in games and really throughout games as well, but he is pounding the zone right now all around the zone, and we haven't even seen the breaking ball yet. This has just been all gas so far to start this game. The, pitcher, the pitch management is going to be very interesting. We'll tell you why here in this game for the Bees as they are paying close attention to coming up. what's coming up at the end of the week as that fastball misses outside for a ball 1-0. Going to Hoover, Alabama to face some of the top teams in the country, and they are going to treat those games like state tournament games. They're going with the intention of getting some stuff done. As the 1 0 fastball, this one's grounded foul. As such, Caden Shanks, they're facing one of the top teams in the country on Friday. Safe bet he's going to get the ball in that game. That's five days away, so he's got free reign. They would love for him to go deep in this game and save some of those other arms who they may need on Thursday. 1-1 one, one pitch coming home. There's that fastball swung on and sent by Jack Everett over the left field fence. And 
One and two. Shanks making quick work here of this White County lineup. The last time these two teams got together was a year ago in Sparta, and it was a no-hit bid for Wyatt Curtis. Shanks with a look in towards Allison. Delivers home the one, two. That one misses away with the off speed. Two and two. Yeah, 15 to zero win in six innings in that one. You mentioned Wyatt Curtis, no hitter through the six innings. They beat him also 11 to zero in game number one. So Sparta looking for a run against this Upperman team. The 2 2 pitch. Shanks delivers home a fastball. Good battle swing there for Jack Everett and the very impressive Eli Smith. He's a name to remember. He's going to burst onto the scene probably starting today. He's in the on deck circle. To really on deck area here. It's the, the, <laughs> right outside the dugout. Right outside the dugout. <laughs> The dead grass. The only dead grass. Yeah, the only dead grass. Turf Masters Landscape Management has this place in great shape. This one's ripped over. Juju Yano fields it on a hop, loads up, delivers to first, and a good dig by Alec Wilson. And Caden Shanks works a 1-2-3 inning for the Upper Men Bees. We'll see Will Thomas go to the mound for the Warriors when we come back. This is High School Baseball, presented by Nick's Restaurant on the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing is proud to support student-athletes and athletic departments throughout the Upper Cumberland. They're also proud to sponsor the Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing Player of the Game on this broadcast. From trophies to t-shirts, they can do it all. Stop by and see them at 120 Circle Drive in Allgood or give them a call at 931-537-9559. Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing is proud to sponsor this broadcast on UCR Media Network. Frontier Chevrolet is ready to get you into your next vehicle and are proud to offer a lifetime powertrain warranty on nearly all vehicles below 80,000 miles. View inventory online at www.caseychevy.com, including the brand new Chevy Trax and Traverse, or stop in at 2350 Cookville Highway today. Remember, don't buy till you see Jason Fye. Welcome back on the mound, Will Thomas for the White County Warriors. He's looking to get fired up against this explosive Upperman B lineup who will bat one through nine like this. Leading things off is the pitcher, Caden Shanks. Batting second, the center fielder, Justin Fallon. Batting third is the first baseman, Alec Wilson. Batting cleanup is the third baseman, Chris Worsing. Batting fifth, the shortstop, Juju Yano. Batting sixth, the designated hitter, Carson Shoup. Batting seventh tonight is the catcher, rookie Allison. Batting eighth, the right fielder, Carson Holroyd. And flipping the lineup over in the nine spot is Evan Huddleston, the left fielder. Braden Green is the second baseman. He's being hit for by Carson Shoup. As we mentioned, Will Thomas gets the ball. He started three games. He's with a 1-0 record so far. He's got a 4.54 earned run average in 12 and a third innings pitched. He's got 14 strikeouts to seven walks and batters hitting 288 against him so far, but he gets his toughest test of the year so far in the form of this Upperman B lineup. That important number in there, a 288 batting average against. That's going to be a big number for the Bs. They're going to have opportunities. He's going to be around the zone, about 75 on the fastball. He drops a curveball in there about 64 miles an hour, so he can switch it up a little bit with those two pitches, but he's going to have to be in the zone. And the Bs, you, you kind of talked about it. They almost seem like they hit better against those higher velocity guys. We'll see if they're able to time up Maybe the slower of a, velo of a velocity guy yeah, in Listen, you got Thomas. several D1 guys in this lineup. They're used in their summer ball to facing mm -hmm. 85, 90 mile hour pitchers, and they slow it down in district play in some of these non district games. It can throw them off. First pitch in to Caden Shanks, who you look at the stats overall and you say, man, he's only batting 238. Well, a week ago he was batting in the low hundreds. Yeah. It is really ticking up. He had a two RBI triple against Stewart's Creek. And he's leading things off today. The 1 0 pitch in. This one swung on and roped over. And a nice play to range over and make the catch and deliver the throw to first. No problem there at second base for Eli Smith. We mentioned his name. We'll talk a lot more about him throughout this doubleheader. And it's one up, one down for Will Thomas. Yeah, freshman over there at second base for this White County team. And uh, I don't know if there's any relation to Jacob Smith, which, of course, he was a really good player for him a year ago. Would imagine there might be some there. But yeah, he's a very talented player coming up, one of their best hitters. And of course, Bees have a pretty good hitter at the plate right now. Now. Justin Fallon stands in. Thomas going to deliver the first pitch in. He'll be in the mid-70s with the fastballs. This one fouled out of play. 0-1 in the field for Sparta in this game. Catching the balls and strikes is Case and Seal. Over at first base is Jack Everett. As we mentioned, the second <coughs> baseman is Eli Smith. Austin Pionki is the shortstop. And the third baseman is Jonathan Boswell. As Thomas delivers home the 0-1 to Fallon, he rips this one. Fouled on a third base line. And Thomas quickly goes ahead and... 0-2 oh, in the outfield today for the Warriors. Wyatt Diltz out and left. The center fielder is Sam Dykus, and the right fielder is Caden Siebers. By the way, that is grass out there. That is not turf, even though the lines are so nice. They are very nice. As the 
0-2 pitch coming in to Fallon. Breaking ball. He sends this one over towards the shortstop, and it gets through for a base hit, and it could be extras. Fallon with a ton of speed. He rounds first, heading to second. The ball got all the way to the track, and that's going to be a stand-up. South Willow Auto Clinic double for Justin Fallon. The South Willow Auto Clinic are your hometown auto doctors. And the Bees have a runner in scoring position for Alec Wilson. Yeah, really good start to the ball game for the Bees. And it, you mentioned it. They've, they've changed the lineup up a little bit. It seems like it's staying the same after last week. And it seems like this may be the lineup to go forward throughout the rest of this season. Uh, debate in the press box. It's definitely a base hit for Justin Fallon. And it's Alec Wilson standing in the cleanup batter. Or the three-hole hitter, I should say. First pitch swinging here. He fouls it back into himself. And for Wilson, he's been really consistent at the plate. Batting 333 on the campaign. He's got five RBIs. He's worked five walks. And he's behind 0-1. Chris Worsing, the impressive freshman behind him. A couple mm -hmm. of good, really strong freshmen yeah. in this game. As Thomas, going out of the stretch, checks back towards the speedy foul. And the fastball misses into Wilson. And it's 1-1. One and one. Yeah, that, that's a makes this B's lineup so difficult. Obviously, at the top of the lineup, it's really, really good, but it continues to be that way even as you get down in 7, 8, and 9. 1-1 one, one count here for Alec Wilson. Will Thomas trying to work through this first inning. He's got a runner in scoring position, and now time going to be called behind the plate by Wilson as Thomas took his time wisely, checking back towards Justin Fallon. Fallon behind the, or out there in the field. He's stolen a couple of bases, two for two. The Bees so far this year have not been caught stealing at all as there's a breaking ball in for a strike. And it goes to one and two. Good pitch there from Thomas. So they're 11 for 11. Meanwhile, they've caught six of their opponents trying to swipe a bag. Big credit to Ricky Allison yeah. behind the dish on that one. This is a White County team that you'll see them on the base path. They'll like to get out and run if they can. The one, two misses low and outside. Yeah, going to be pressure on the catchers in this one. Case and seal behind the dish. You let something get away with somebody like Fallon or especially a Caden Shanks out there, and he will take off and go. That one is swung on, sent way up into the air. Smith is under it at second. He makes the catch for a big second out. So now we're seeing that freshman come into the plate. He's been playing really well so far this season. Going to have a good opportunity here. And we've seen him kind of come up in these big moments. And for the Bees, they've got a guy on second base. You have him on scoring position in that first inning of the game, trying to get that first run across and just trying to get that scoring going here for the Bees early on in this one. First innings have not been uh, the strongest offensively for Upperman this year. Second time through the lineup is when they've done a lot of damage. Chris Worsing, you mentioned, he's been very impressive so far, he leads the team in average at 375. He's also 2-0 and on the mound with a 2.74 ERA. Pitched really well against Stewart's Creek. Pitched well against Stone Memorial as well last week. First pitch into him is a breaking ball. He sends it over towards the shortstop, fields it cleanly, loads up, throw over, and a dig over there at first to retire the side. That's going to go as a 6-3. Pionki with the grab, Everett with the dig, and... That will retire the side. A scoreless first inning in the books. This is High School Baseball, presented by Nick's Restaurant on the Frontier Chevy, UCR Media Network. I'm looking for someone who can keep me comfortable, stay here for the long run, and definitely not high maintenance. Not right. Absolutely not. This one looks perfect. Find your perfect match with Hiller. Get Find your perfect match with Hiller. Get a free UV light with select new HVAC systems, 50% off a descaler with new tankless water heaters, or free surge protection with a new whole home generator. like that one too. Steel Technologies has been part of the Rutherford County community for over 35 years. Their plants in Murfreesboro and Smyrna include over 150 teammates who process coils, metal sheets, and blanks for customers across North America. Steel Tech Smyrna and Murfreesboro plants are expanding, and they need teammates to join their team. With openings including machine and forklift operators, truck drivers, and more, they have the position for you with competitive wages and monthly bonus opportunities. For more information and to apply online, scan the QR code on your screen now. Steel Tech is a proud sponsor of this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Steel Tech. Faith. Family. Steel Tech.
Four, five, six, due up for the White County Warriors in this half inning, and the freshman Eli Smith going to stride in and get things started. Caden Shanks looked good. Will Thomas gave up the double. It was a hard-hit double by Fallon, but other than that, Jacob, both those pitchers control the first inning. Yeah, I mean, they've been around the zone. The batters have been pretty aggressive early on, and that's the big thing, especially in high school baseball. I mean, if you're around the zone, you're going to give yourself a chance and at least give your defense a chance to make some plays for it, and we saw a couple of nice plays by Pianchi there with shortstop for White County. Same thing for Upperman as well. Shanks has been throwing it pretty well, but now really good battle here between the freshmen and then, of course, Kane Shanks on the mound. This is a doubleheader. Game two will follow quickly after game one. We'll keep it in the same stream as the first pitch from Shanks is across for a strike 0-1 oh, to Eli Smith, and he is has a ridiculous average so far this year, Jacob. Yeah, 440, four extra base hits, 10 runs driven in. He scored four runs as well. The 0-1, oh, close, maybe a hair low, 1-1. One and one. Big thing for him, he's not forcing anything. He's drawn five walks. He's only struck out three times. 1-1 one, one coming into Smith. There's a fastball, and that one misses outside. 2-1, the Sparta dugout likes that. I gotta be careful. We saw it against Stone Memorial last week where the dugouts got in trouble a couple of times. Different umpire. As the 2 1 coming home from Shanks, that's a fastball outside. 3 and 1. As evidenced by the fact that that is outside. It is. It's in the other batter's box. <laughs> Believe it or not, that is a ball. As Shanks gonna tow and deliver the 3 1 pitch home to Smith. Ball 4, and it's a leadoff walk for Eli Smith. He's got good composure there in that batter's box. Jonathan Boswell, the third baseman, going to try to do some damage now as the Warriors try to strike first here on the road in game one of a doubleheader. I mentioned White County. They like to run. However, they haven't taken on rookie Allison behind the plate yet. Smith, 5 of 5 on stolen bases. We'll see if Coach Thompson tries to put anybody in action on the base path. This is an upperman infield that turns a lot of double plays as well. We saw it with this configuration, rather with Green at second. Against Stewart's Creek, they turned a double play as the first pitch in showing bunt it's a cross for a strike oh and one a little small ball here perhaps from the Warriors and that's where Stone Memorial found a little bit of success especially later on in that lineup they were trying to manufacture some of the runs as soon as they got somebody on base they're they're, they're, they're not going to get a ton of hits especially against Shanks who's only allowed three so far for his 10 innings with one of the best pickoff moves in the game throws over back in time with Smith you got Juju Yano over there at shortstop if you try to test him He's going to stay home, showing Bunn again, now backing off his Boswell. That one misses upstairs. It's one and one. The one-one pitch. After a long break, Boswell again shows Bunt, pulls it back, and he's ahead in the count. Two and one. A little pressure being applied here by the White County Warriors. Oh, now Shanks, he's struggling a little bit to find that zone. First batter wasn't able to get it in there to Smith. Now ahead in the count is Boswell at two and one, but still he's shown Bunt the first few times. We'll see if he continues to do so. Smith takes his lead. Boswell shows Bunt again. That's a good pitch across for a strike. Count evens up at two. Yeah, that's a good pitch. He finally brought it down a little bit, but still kept it on the outside part of the plate, not to make it too easy to get the barrel on the ball. Boswell, he's already got that smaller batter's box and shrinking a little bit more with the bunt shown. Probably swing away at two and two. He will, and that one swung on and missed. The second birdies lounge strikeout of the ball game for Caden Shanks. And Will Thomas will try to help his own cause with now a runner at first and one out. Will Thomas, yeah, you mentioned it. Going to try to help himself out. Had a pretty good first inning of action, seeing if he can at least move the runner over with just one out in the inning. Shanks with a glance over. Smith stays home. First pitch. This one swung on. Sent over towards Worsing at third. He's going to try for two. Throws to Green for one. To throw to first is not in time. And I'll rule that one a fielder's choice. Good dig again by Alec Wilson at first. Green did everything he could, not being able to step into the throw. But it's the second out of the inning. Good job by Worsing. You get that lead run around. So still just a runner on first base and two outs. And you get the force at first or second. Makes it a little bit easier on the defense now to get out of the inning. So Thomas reaches first on the fielder's choice. Smith is thrown out at second. And now stepping in is Cole Gentry, the designated hitter. 25th pitch coming here for Caden Shanks early on in this one. He swings at this one and fouls it back. Got this big backstop here in Baxter, the biggest ballpark dimensions-wise in the district. 325 to the flag poles, or the foul poles rather. 345 into the gaps, 375 to get out of dead center field. Almost as far as Livingston. Throw over to first. It's a good one, and they got him. There's that pickoff move from Caden Shanks. Wilson smacks the tag down, and that will retire this side. 
No runs on no hits. Nobody left on. We'll head to the bottom half. Still scoreless. This is High School Baseball presented by Nick's Restaurant on the Frontier Chevy, UCR Media Network. From the sports field to the hunting field, our friends at Hall Sports and Outdoors can outfit anyone. Located in the heart of Jamestown at 207 South Main Street, Hall Sports and Outdoors carries everything from kayaks, fishing gear, and camo to guns and ammo. With top brands such as Columbia, Timberland, Under Armour, Asics, and much more, nobody can top their selection. Need some custom gear for your team? They also offer uniforms, gear, and custom embroidery. Stop by and see them at 207 South Main Street in Jamestown. Hall Sports and Outdoors, proud sponsor of this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Loading the kids in the car. Brokering peace in the back seat. Mastering the snack handoff without even looking. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. We work with independent agents who keep insurance simple, so you can worry about more important things, like figuring out what's growing in that cup holder. That's simple human sense. Visit SwallowsInsurance.com or call us today, 931-526-4025. Protecting your future, it's what we do. Will Thomas back to work trying to do what he did in the first inning, which has put a zero on the scoreboard for the Yupperman Bees. It'll be 5 6 7 due up in this half inning, and Caden Shanks got the pickoff move to first to end that top half of the second. Now, you've been talking about how good it is at how good it has been, and rookie Allison has been kind of been doing the same thing behind the plate, and that's something these White County runners are going to have to pay attention to. Coach Thompson is a good coach. He was, it really wasn't nothing anything he could do out there. It's just the runners paying attention on the base paths. We have effectively suffocated the wasp that we pinned between the windows here. He's still trying. It's breathing its last breath, begging for help, and it will find none from us. Gigantic <laughs> red wasp as Yano swings at the first pitch he sees and sends it right back to Thomas, flashes the leather, and one pitch, one out. They've recorded four outs with just 12 pitches thrown by Will Thomas, and that'll do you just fine in a doubleheader. Yeah, that's a pretty good recipe for success, at least defensively. Obviously, you need some runs on the other side of it as well, and that's going to be tough to do so with Kane Shanks on the mound. But, hey, you're doing everything you can defensively. you got to keep that going as well. Carson Shoup, the designated hitter, he will stand in for his first A-B, batting 200 on the year through 20 A-Bs. The first pitch misses for a ball, 1-0 for Shoup. He's worked three walks. Part of me, he's worked five walks. We know numbers are my strong suit. As the 1-0 pitch, he swings at this one and sends it foul. Thomas so far has really been fastball heavy. He's working in a couple of breaking balls, but it, sending that 75-mile-an-hour fastball over and over again, trying to keep these locations changing and keep the hitters off balance. He quickly delivers home the 1-1. There's that breaking ball. This one's chopped over towards Pianchi. Fields it cleanly, loads up the throw to first. A good stretch. To record this second out and just 15 pitches through for Thomas. He's got two outs in the bottom of the second. Yeah, really good start for Thomas. And again, it doesn't have bad numbers. The 454 ERA stands out a little bit. And then the 288 batting average against is the other big number. However, he is 1 0 in the three games started. And he's got pretty good strikeout numbers as well with the 14 strikeouts through 12 innings pitched. Rookie Allison going to stand in here. He roared to life after a slow start against Stewart's Creek with three singles. Down in the seventh spot, trying to spark him. It also sparked the lower third of the lineup for Upperman. The first pitch misses outside for a ball 1-0. No, well, that's who really got it going against Stone Memorial last week in that second game, a game that they trailed 6-1. to one, Were able to come back and win it 15-11. 1-0 pitch. That one dust him off the plate, missing inside 2-0. and Allison at the plate, Carson Holroyd on deck for Upperman as they hit the lower third of the order. Will Thomas trying to work another quick inning. He's giving up the lone double to Fallon. Other than that, been perfect. The 2-0. That's a good fastball across for a strike. 2-1. and one. Not a bad look for Allison either. First couple of pitches weren't really that close. That one was on the edge. Just a good pitch. Thomas quickly delivers back the 2-1 pitch. This one bounces in and a hitter's count to a good hitter. 3-1. and one. Good baseball weather today outside of the wind. 63 degrees, but the wind ruins it. It's over 20 mile an hour gusts blowing out to our left. Right to that left foul pole, kind of coming from the Sparta dugout. You can take a 7-iron from 150-yard club to 130-yard club. The 3-1 breaking ball, this one sent up into the air. He's going to get caught in the win, giving Chase a couple of Warriors defensively and able to make the grab as Kaysen Seal to retire the side. 
Another good inning for Will Thomas on the mound. We'll head to the third, still scoreless. This is High School Baseball, presented by Nick's Restaurant on the Frontier Chevy, UCR Media Network. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, due up for the White County Warriors in this half inning. We are scoreless heading into the third inning. Nick's Restaurant has been family owned and operating in the Upper Cumberland for over 50 years. Located right off Jefferson Avenue, a tremendous place for a date night. Take your family out for dinner, a banquet, or a team event. All of the above. They're at Nick's Restaurant. Delicious prime ribs, steaks, seafood, chicken, salads, sandwiches, and of course, ice cream pie. The world famous. You absolutely have to round out the meal with ice cream pie. Trust me, I would not steer you wrong on food, and especially not on desserts. Jacob Vincent can attest for that. Mm -hmm. As we head to the third, still scoreless. These two pitchers controlling the, day, the game right now. Caden Shanks allowed one walk for White County's Will Thomas. One double, and that's it. Everything else has been all defense. It has been moving along, and obviously we'll say that, and it'll come to a stalwart. But it really, these guys have been really solid early on, and we kind of knew it, especially these district games, and we've seen that even against Stone Memorial. The first three, four innings have been really, really good against whoever the Bees are playing and really a lot of the games in district play so far. The question for Will Thomas will be the second time through the lineup. Yep. We've seen that be the explosive period for upper minute times. He'll try to continue to do what he's doing as the first pitch of the inning is across with a fastball for a strike. 87 miles an hour at the knees. Here to Cole Gentry. It's him and Siebers and Dykus do up in this half inning. Yeah, of course he was up uh, to end that last half inning. The 0-1. This one's ripped over towards Braden Green. Ranges to his left and it's going to eat him up for an error. And that's going to allow the leadoff hitter Cole Gentry to reach first base. So an E4 and Caden Siebers has a base runner to work with here. Yeah, and the first part, you got to take advantage of this. You get a base runner on, you try to move them around. And we saw Coach Thompson try to move uh, move the runners over with a bunt earlier on with when Bosworth was at the you're play. We'll see, see if they again. try to do it again. Yeah, you're going to see it again, and that's one where you got to tap that baseball if it's rolling towards you. You can't allow it to take that many hops, and it hops up and gets out. And as something just goes flying into the grandstands out of the press box, <laughs> throw over to first back in time is the runner Gentry. May have been a plate. Uh, Siebers was a late addition. His Trent Wilson is not here today. We thought we may see him pitching in game number two. But yeah, he is their ace. He is, and so that will change things in that game, especially 0-1, now showing Bunt, getting down a good one. Shanks going to range up. He bare hands it. Only one throw. It's to first. Now Wilson throws behind. Got to be careful there. The tag is down, but diving back in was Gentry, and that's going to be a ground out for Sievers, but he moves the runner over. Sam Dykus will stride in now, maybe doing the same thing here, and that's where you got to be careful against this upper mm -hmm. team. You almost get caught cheating off the bag at second. Yeah, a good productive out, but yeah, you said it. They've got arms all over the infield. It doesn't matter where you go. Obviously, Wilson over there, one of the better pitchers on the team. He can make a good throw down to second and almost did so. Check back for Shanks. Huge lead over there at second. First pitch is a good one. Across for a strike, 0-1. Swinging away here is Dykus, the leadoff hitter in the order. Austin Pionki is in the on-deck circle. Ooh, That's man. a sick breaking ball, and it was called a ball, Ooh. one and one. He said uh, it was high, uh, but that uh, thing maybe? dipped right across. Maybe. That was a really good pitch. <laughs> one and one is waved at first strike, one and two, laughing at Jimmy in the press box. It's great. Best PA announcer in the game over here. We're in here for a lot of the games. you got to have some fun. 
as the one-two pitch comes home. There's that breaking ball again. That I mean, did miss high for a ball. So he's going 87-88 with the fastball. That's 73. Mm-hmm. And then he's mixing in that off speed about 82, the change up as well. Check back here. The 2-2 coming from Caden Shanks. Revs up the heater. That gets away from Allison and allows the runner to move 90 feet away from being the game's opening run. Cole Gentry now at third. And Dykus in a full count, three and two with a one out. Pionki on deck. Warriors threatening again. Well, you kind of wondered if they tried to bunt him over. Didn't have to that time. That one gets away. Now a full count. You get a good A-B here, and maybe you have two runners on and just one out in the inning. Shanks with a 3-2 pitch upcoming here to Sam Dykus. Waved at and missed. Got him chasing the high cheese for his third. Birdies lounge strike out of the game, and now... Pionki going to try to score the run here with two outs in the top of the third. Well, Pionki does have a couple extra base hits, both of them doubles, two runs driven in. That has not been his strong suit. It's now been three games in a row. He has not had a hit looking for his first hit here today as well. We're going to get the camera corrected here in a moment. I know it's glitching just a little bit, but audio is good as the first pitch breaking ball is across for a strike. That curveball really working right now for Shanks. It's 0-1. When he's throwing that well, he is tough to hit. Pionki going to try to do just that. He mm-hmm. ripped it off again. Now 0-2, and, and he can throw anything he wants at 0-2. Yeah, that's so tough when you see two breaking balls like that, and he's smartly asked for time, takes a beat. 0-2 pitch, fastball, called. Strike three, Caden Shanks. Two straight. Birdies lounge punch outs to retire the side. We're going to fix this camera. It's going to go black for just a second and mute, but don't worry. We'll still be here. Then you hear a word from our sponsor. We'll be back with the bottom half of the third. Don't go anywhere. Stainless steel appliances. All cabinets throughout the house are soft close and have granite countertops. For more information, call Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate at 931-979-7145 or 931-526-9581. Always ask for Sonia Brown. Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Fire and Vine in Cookville is the Upper Cumberland's home for delicious Chicago-style pizza, beef, chicken, fish, and more. Located in Cookville's historic downtown district, Fire and Vine's food and atmosphere will keep you coming back for more. Take in stunning views with creative food and drinks on the rooftop. Fire and Vine is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Well, we hope the camera's fixed. It looks good right now. We'll keep an eye on it. Well, Thomas, he's been really good so far. 8-9-1 due up for the bees in this half inning. We are scoreless, and you just saw why Caden Shanks is going to Lipscomb, and they really like him. He got a little bit of a jam runner at third with one out, and what does he do? He strikes out the next two he sees in dominant fashion. Yeah, and then we kind of talked about it. You mentioned that full count. Runner on third base with one out, and uh, we mentioned how this could be a good AP, a good opportunity for White County. The other part to that is there's a Division One pitcher on the mound, and he could very easily get out of the inning, and that's exactly what he did. Carson Holroyd's come up big in some spots. First pitch swung on, foul tipped into the mitt, 0-1. He maybe saved the game against Stewart's Creek. A ball in the right field. He fielded it and lasered the runner trying to stretch it to home, and quite frankly, he should have done it three times as the next pitch is in the 0-1. This one's flared up into the infield. Angling into foul territory and ranging up to make the catch is Cason Seal. He's been good behind the dish, and it's quickly, once again, one up, one down. Holroyd yesterday, or I guess it was on Friday there at Friendship Christian, had three of those plays in the right field where he had three great throws in. One bounced just in front of rookie Allison. The next one was cut off. If it had gotten there, it would have been a bang-bang play. And then the third to keep the game tied, and then Upperman broke the tie in the next half inning. Here's Evan Huddleston. Speaking of swinging a great bat yeah. since he got into the lineup, he's batting 417 last week, first week back after leaving the basketball field and or basketball court, and he's wearing 24 this year mm-hmm. from four. Other side. A little less they power in that same. bat right now, but as he swings and misses on this one, one and one, he's getting on base at about the same clip as his older brother was. 
His older brother just takes a few more trips around. That's true. He he hits it really far. As the one one, this one's waved at and missed in one and two, and probably destined to strike out here because we just talked about how good of he's swinging the bat. Just how it works. Will Thomas, he's working methodically. He's working quickly. He's not trying to do too much. Not having any wild pitches. He's just making good pitch after good pitch. Delivers home the one two, and there's one in the dirt because the announcer jinx is undefeated. It's two and two. No such thing. There's definitely such a thing. Refuse to believe There's it. Definitely such a thing. <laughs> the two two comes home. That one bounces in. Three and two. Still think it's not a thing? We're gonna find out right here. Three and two. Jacob Vincent, the announcer jinx isn't real and always foul. Only seven up walks three. on the season. Always, always foul, up foul three. Up three. Always. Here comes the three two. Huddleston swings at this one and we'll do it again at the full count. I can't express enough. Houston got away with always. it. Always. Houston got away foul with it. Foul up three. What a game. Awesome game. Down what a shot. 13 with a two minutes to play. Texas A&M against Houston yesterday. Love it. A 3-2 pitch coming home to Huddleston. Swings at this one, flares it out into right field, turning and running back. Able to track it, though, a nice job on the right field receivers, and that can be a tough play once you have to start turning your shoulders and running backwards, but he does it well, and now Caden Shanks gets his second crack at Will Thomas, who's faced just one more than the minimum so far. Yeah, and a nice job by Siebers as well. Again, he was kind of that late addition to this lineup, gets thrown out into right field. There's a lot of wind out there. It's blowing out towards left, so that one kind of taking it back towards the field to play to his right. Makes a good catch on it. Shanks grounded out to open up the ball game. He steps in here. Thomas. As Shanks gets a bunt down right to Thomas, he's got to make a quick throw over. He does, and a big show of emotion over there at first base for Jack Everett as the side is retired, and we barrel into the middle frames with one combined hit. We're still scoreless. This is High School Baseball presented by Nick's Restaurant on the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. Clint Connor is your local auctions expert. With full service from start to finish, the Exit Crossroads Auction Group are here to make the process easy for you. Visit CrossroadsAuctionGroup.com for more details and current auctions. Clint Connor, your local auctions expert, is proud to sponsor this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. The Crouch Team with Highlands Lay Real Estate proudly presents this gorgeous home on Cross Point Drive. Boasting four bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms with nearly 2,000 square feet, this home in the Prescott School District in Cookville could be your forever home. Call 931-979-1191 for more information and to schedule a showing or visit chatandamycrouch.com. The Crouch Team with Highlands Elite Real Estate is proud to sponsor this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Well, this game is zipping along. 36 minutes in and we are into the top of the fourth inning. Caden Shanks goes to work and he has faced one over the minimum. Case and Seal, Jack Everett, Eli Smith do up in this half inning. A walk, the lone blemish so far for the Lipscomb signee. And he's going to get to take his pick. And Lipscomb's going to decide if they want him to pitch or they want him to be a shortstop. But so far, it seems like they may want him to do both. And that makes sense when you watch how this kid plays baseball. Yeah, you saw it with Eli Huddleston going to Tech this season. He's been chosen as a pitcher this season. But we've seen, obviously, last year he was the best pitcher. He was the best hitter on the team. And so Shanks is kind of doing the same thing this year as well. And... Uh, uh, he's going to be in the running for that Mr. Baseball yeah, Award. Of course, there's a man by the name of Carson Quillen that they may face a little later on in the postseason as well. Yeah, Carson Quillen out there at Greenville, of course, and Greenville and Upperman. Second and third destined. right now in the coaches' poll. Tennessee High moved up to first wrongly. It just feels like <laughs> we're barreling. It, it feels like we're barreling towards in every sport. Greenville and Upperman. Mm -hmm. And who knows how the bracket would I was shake say, out. I wonder if they put in them the in the uh, quarterfinals this year. The quote unquote blind draw, but yeah. if there's any justice in a blind draw, if it were to get to that point, yeah, let's go ahead and put those teams on the other opposite mm -hmm. side. Case and Seal stepping in. First pitch, fastball across for a strike, 0 and 1. And that's actually that changeup at 84. Yeah, you mentioned he's kind of been up and down 88 down to lower 80s, and then he'll drop that curveball down in there 73. Speaking of, that is ridiculous. Hey, he is ripping that breaking ball off at. 0-2. Oh, yeah, 75 that time. <laughs> and now he can throw whatever he wants. Seal trying to battle this one. He waves at it and misses. It gets away, and he didn't realize it, and that allows Allison to have plenty of time to make the throw over to Wilson. If Seal realizes that gets away, he's going to reach first. But instead, it's another birdies lounge strikeout for Caden Shanks. No, good job by rookie Allison getting back in time, sprinting back there, making a good throw as well. Would have been close no matter what, even if he is sprinting out of the box. But... Uh, good job by Allison and gets the first out of the inning. Three straight 
Birdies Lounge strikeouts for Caden Shanks. He's got five on the outing so far. First pitch fastball misses outside for a ball. 1-0. and oh. This is Jack Everett. He had a hard hit grounder over to short to retire the side in the first. Shanks delivers home the 1-0. This one's flared out of play. Evens it up. And there's a softball game going on over there. So we do not anticipate games being played tomorrow in the upper. No. That's part of why we have a double header tonight. Bad weather coming in. The 1-1. That one misses, looking for that breaking ball. Didn't come out clean. It's two and one. Yeah, a lot of rain, a lot of wind. The two one pitch. There's a fastball, misses outside, and now Everett ahead in the count. And Eli Smith looming on deck. White County trying to put some more pressure on here. They've threatened more than Upperman has early on in this game. LA taking on DeKalb tonight. Stone and CC, the Crossville rivalry. That's where Goose is at, and Rusty tonight. Is with Jackson County taking on Smith County. This one swung on, goes over the outstretched glove of Shanks. Green gets it, loads up the throw to first. Bang, bang, play, not in time. Everett legs out the infield single. That's good baseball all the way around. Everett with the speed over to first. Green with a good job to range over and make an accurate throw. And it's a runner at first with one out. That was a really nice play by Green. I know it didn't get there in time, but that's a long way over there to second base, especially after it takes that bounce. It's a little bit slower, makes a really good throw, and at least makes the umpire think about it a little bit. And a nice job by Everett legging it out. Best hitter in the lineup now, Eli Smith at the plate. He walked in his first appearance. There's that breaking ball across for strike one. It dips across the plate and ends up kind of in that line of the other batter's box, and it's 0-1. And just catches that piece of the corner of the plate. Here comes the 0-1. Breaking ball that time got in. Did it hit the bat or that did hit, it hit him? It hit, hit him. Bat. Ooh, I don't know. So they're going to say it hit him, and Smith going to reach for the second time. It took a that weird sure – it either, like it it either hit, hit his helmet or it hit the bat, but there's no protest, so I believe it hit the back of the helmet. Yeah, Coach Shanks didn't come out. So, yeah, so I think it hit the helmet, and Boswell – a lot of times we can tell we're a lot further yeah. back here in the press box than we are some nights, and we're not complaining about that. Very happy to be in the press box. Oh, yes. As Boswell, <laughs> he struck out – and his first appearance after showing bunt a couple of times. May do that again here with runners at first and second and one out. 48 pitch coming here for Caden Shanks. Boswell's going to swing away, and it's a fastball across for strike one. A real opportunity here for White County and a real opportunity for Caden Shanks. He's worked around a few of these, but again, no hits yet for this White County team. Now they did get the one back. Everett legged out that infield oh, good single. Point. Good point. Here comes the 0-1. This one swung on, flared out in the right field, but it's going to be into foul territory. 0-2, oh, gigantic foul territory here in Baxter. Let me rephrase. No solid contact yet. Yeah, that one was a little one hopper. Yeah. And in the middle of the infield there, and he's able to leg it out. You haven't barreled anything up yet for White County. 0-2 oh, pitch, breaking ball. Close, didn't get it quite to break enough into that inside part of the zone, and it's one and two. That's a tough pitch. Yeah, he's getting a little more break on that as well with that wind kind of pushing out towards him. He's checking back. Yano looking back, and now they're going to throw there. Tag is not in time. You could see it developing from here, and that was a tough shot for Everett as he dove back in and maybe knocked the wind out of himself just a little bit. You could see Yano kind of cheating behind Everett there, and he was able to dive back in. Time is called as he's still trying to get his wind I think back he in there. Land right on his stomach. Which never feels great. If I dive and land on my stomach, you're gonna have to take me to the hospital. <laughs> There's you gotta I get saw the, that at basketball you a few weeks ago. We almost tank out. got there. Yeah, you're gonna have to take the oxygen tank out for me. I mean, we've got a the game is postponed. If Getting I go the down wind on my knocked stomach. out of you is one of the worst feelings in the it world. It is the worst. It's one and two now after that quick break. He's okay out there at second. Shanks, big kick, delivers home, and that one is very close. Now Allison throws behind, and Yano able to snag it on a hop. We saw him get two runners against Friendship Christian with that move, throwing behind him. Yeah, and from Shanks, to the, that pickoff move a little bit ago, if he throws it on the other side of the bag, you probably get him. Two and two pitch coming here to Boswell. Breaking ball. A little high, and a Big moment here. High leverage situation. Full count. Three and two with one out and two on here in the top of the fourth inning of a scoreless district matchup. Shanks checks back. Delivers home a fastball. Misses. Ball four. And Boswell reaches first. And they are loaded now for Will Thomas, the pitcher 
who can really help his own cause and make himself nearly the Nelson Trophy and screen printing player of the game. With something big here, and first, Coach Jerome Barger is going to come out and have a word with Caden Shanks. Well, only one run driven in on the season so far for Thomas. It's a, an extra base hit. He is batting 217, but looking for probably his biggest hit of the season so far. He only got one out, and you're kind of showing the bunting motion. Why not yeah, try absolutely. the sacrifice? Absolutely. I'd be a bit surprised if they don't show bunt here. You got a really good upperman infield there. Chris Worsing over there at third, Alec Wilson at first, and then Caden Shanks. He can cover a lot of ground at the mm -hmm. pitcher's mound, so it's got to be a good bunt, but you're trying to get a run across here with your pitcher throwing as good as he has. Yeah. I was just going to say the same thing. With as solid as he has been on the mound, why not just try to get the one across? Obviously, there's still only one out, so got to be careful everywhere else after that. He could also try to just put one in the outfield. The yep. problem is you got some good arms out there. Yep. Just get it deep, deep enough. And there's Upperman outfield. Infield in at the corners for the Bees. Middle infield at double play depth. Out of the full windup, first pitch from Shanks is a fastball right there for strike one. Bases loaded here for the Warriors, trying to strike first on the road. 0-1 fastball, and it's a good... Job by rookie Allison to stick the glove out and block that one, one and one. Upperman has trailed in every district game so far <laughs> yeah. this season. Both of them against Stone. Here comes the one, one. That fastball flared out into right field. Long way for Holroy to go, and it gets down in foul territory. And for White County, you're preferring that that drops into the glove of Carson Holroy because right. it's going to be a run across. Instead, it's one and two, and Shanks is thinking one thing here. Birdie's line strikeout. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's got quite a few of them already. Will he throw the heater or break off the curve? We're going to find out on the one two. Breaking ball. Cool. Strike three for the Birdie's line strikeout. That's a big time pitch by Caden Shanks and now Cole Gentry, the designated hitter. He reached on an error. He strides in with the bases loaded and two outs. Now he's hitting pretty well. 292, five runs driven in. So he is kind of the guy you'd rather have up in this situation with the bases loaded, but got to get it down in the grass. Six strikeouts so far for Caden Shanks here. First pitch of the A-B. This one's sent over towards Alec Wilson at first. It eats him up a little bit. He grabs it and beats him to the bag by a step. And Caden Shanks gets out of a jam. We'll head to the bottom half of the fourth, still scoreless, as the bases are left loaded. This is High School Baseball, presented by Nick's Restaurant on the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. Clint Connor is your local auctions expert. With full service from start to finish, the Exit Crossroads Auction Group are here to make the process easy for you. Visit CrossroadsAuctionGroup.com for more details and current auctions. Clint Connor, your local auctions expert, is proud to sponsor this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. The Crouch team with Highlands Elite Real Estate proudly presents this gorgeous home on Cross Point Drive. Boasting four bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms with nearly 2,000 Prescott School District in Cookville could be your forever home. Call 931-979-1191 for more information and to schedule a showing or visit chatandamycrouch.com. The Crouch team with Highlands Elite Real Estate is proud to sponsor this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Two, three, four, due up in this half inning for the Upperman Bees. Will Thomas, he's been really, really good on the mound for the White County Warriors. He's allowed just one hit. One runner has been left stranded. He's faced one more than the minimum, and Justin Fallon will lead things off. And again, second time through the lineup, second and third times have been the really damaged periods for Upperman. Will Thomas trying to change that right now. No matter the result of this game, how about the battle that White County has shown already this season? They're one and one in district play, and this is a team that has won just a handful of ball games in the last two seasons, and then they get Coach Thompson now in his second year at the helm, and they've been really competitive already this year. Just a three and six record, but even go back to that DeKalb County game. They lost the first one seven to two. They come back in the second one, trailing in the seventh, ten to nine, and walk it off. They've been playing some good baseball at times this season. Fallon steps in. He doubled. Hard hit ball got just past the shortstop in the left field. And first pitch is across for strike one in the outside corner, 0 and 1. And with no Trenton Wilson here, the pitcher in game two, a bit of a mystery for White County. We know it's going to be for Alperman. It's going to be rookie Allison getting the ball. His first start is the 0 1 bounces in, 1 and 1. Alperman has a lot of pitchers available. Justin Fallon. Kind of top among the list. Alec Wilson pitched on Thursday, so you imagine probably not Chris Worsing, Juju Yano, no as well as that one 
misses inside those two definitely not as they pitched on Friday in significant work. Well, of course, they've got four games coming up Thursday through Saturday this week as well. Yeah, one game on Thursday, then two on Friday, another on Saturday. There's the 2-1. This one's waved at and missed 2-2. Two and two. Got him fishing for that one. And, yeah, that that's where the weather moving up helps Upperman because they're going to yeah. have more pitchers available earlier at the end of the week down there in Hoover. The 2-2 two -two pitch. This one swung on and sent out for another base hit for Justin Fallon. He has really roared to life with that bat. And he will reach with a leadoff single to bring up Alec Wilson, who flew out in the infield back in the first inning. Well, we've seen in the last two seasons for Fallon, obviously having a great freshman year, slow starts to sophomore and junior season. And then he kind of gets it ramped up a little bit. And it seems like once he gets it ramped up, it never goes back down. And he's hitting 400 for the rest of the year. Yeah, he'll go on a 28-game hitting streak. Just when you think that he's having a rough year, he roars to life. And now he's got that healthy lead over there at first. First pitch to Wilson. He sends this one out in the left field. Long way to go, and it's down for a base hit. Gets all the way to the fence. Fallon heading to third. He's going to head home. Here comes the throw in from left. Pitcher has it, and it's going to be an RBI. South Willow Auto Clinic double. Wilson advances over on the throw, and Upperman breaks the tie on the RBI double by Alec Wilson. And it's one nothing bees. Yeah, a really good piece of base running there by Alec Wilson as well. After the throw got away from third base, it just kind of trickled into foul territory. Wilson was watching it the whole way. Had to turn on the Jets a little bit to get there to third base, but a good job. And now he gives himself a chance to get in and score as well. And here's Chris Worsing, the freshman, grounded out in his first appearance. Stands in here with a runner at third and nobody out. And the first pitch, and he went chasing it that one. It was up in the above the zone and he was able to get his hands to it and barrel that thing up in the left field one hopped into the wall you know it's that high cheese it looks good sometimes 1-0 that one misses inside now Worsing quickly goes ahead two balls no strikes mentioned leading the team in batting average he has four RBIs already on the campaign for Alec Wilson that's RBI number six double number two this pitch by Worst to Worsing is sent out into right field for an RBI single, and all of a sudden, second time through the lineup, Upperman's offense has roared to life. It's 2 nothing Bs. I was just going to say, it's always that second time through. It gets a little bit trickier for those pitchers on the other side. It seems like the th things they do the first time through don't quite work as well that second time, and a credit uh, to uh, Thomas on the mound. He's done a good yeah. job being around the zone, but now the Bs have had a chance to time him up, and they're putting that into action. And Will Thomas trying to battle in here. Still nobody out. He's got a runner at first now. Two across for the Bees as they have two hits in a row. Three hits, rather, in a row to open up this inning. First pitch gets the call. 1-0 and on that outside part of the zone. Still just a 2 nothing game if you're White County, but you need the bleeding to stop immediately because they could put a crooked letter up in a hurry. We've seen him been able to get a few quick outs. Throw over. Worsing is back in time. So far on the year, he has not attempted to steal a base. That's not his game as there goes the pizza in the press box with a big <laughs> wind gust. A 1-0 count. It's been the two big wind gusts. Juju Yano grounded out. Worsing took off, hit and run. Now he has to retreat as this one's into right field. Worsing, and it dropped in. Good job by Chris Worsing as it looked like that was going to be easily caught. He wasn't so sure, and you can give a big assist to the wind on that one as it gets down for a single. Well, it was right after that big wind gust came through. It just kind of continued on. That one goes up in the air, and then it just kind of hit a wall and came right back down. It was a really tough play out there in right field for Seabers, and now a big opportunity here for Shoop at the plate. A trip to the mound here for the White County Warriors as they're trying to calm things down here. Upperman now with four straight hits to open up this inning. They had just one to the first three frames. Carson Shoop, he's 0 for 1 with a ground out. He's got runners at first and second with nobody out. And, yeah, that ball, when it was off the bat, looked like Seabers was going to be able to catch it easily. Yeah. But then it just started floating instead of pushing nothing forward. Seabers could do. <laughs> it was just hovering in the air and then started bailing away as it got caught up in a big wind gust. And this is kind of where the Bees found it against Stone Memorial yeah. in that last district game that they played here in the second half of the lineup after that second time through. Carson Shoop standing in here. First pitch from Thomas, and now they're starting to really swing aggressively. That one ripped foul, 0-1. This is a very experienced Upperman team. They don't really blink with slow starts. And it helps them when they have uh, Caden Shanks throwing the way he is yes, on the mound. Check back for Thomas, the 0-1. This one's sent over. It's a weak roller. Second baseman ranges to make the play, and the throw over. 
And that's a good job to record the out by White County. Both runners do advance, though, and it'll bring up rookie Allison trying to do some significant damage. You can kind of see some of the dirt flying across the field that time. But, yeah, for rookie Allison, he's going to have an opportunity here to put a bat on a ball. Still only one out in the inning, two runners in scoring position. A productive out there for Shoop. He hits it to the right side of the infield, doesn't let the other runners get in any danger and able to move up in the process. Eli Smith made that defensive assist. Rookie Allison, he flew out in the foul territory. First pitch in is a breaking ball that misses 1-0. and Two across for the Bees. They've got two more in scoring position here. In the bottom of the fourth inning, game number one of a doubleheader tonight in Baxter. White County will be the home team in game number two. As the 1-0, that one misses low, and it's 2-0. Carson Holroyd is on deck, and if you're Thomas right now, you'd love to get the second out, but you have that empty base over there. So you know you can't leave something easy for rookie Allison to put a charge into. 2-0, that one misses inside, and now it's three balls and no strikes. This is the other problem for White County. Where do they go in the rotation? knowing that you don't have Trenton Wilson in the building. And you have another game to come up after this. Here comes the 3-0 to rookie Allison. And that's red light special right across for a strike, 3-1. and one. Yeah, and he's only at 47 pitches right now, so he's got miles to go still. So he just needs a couple of good pitches yes. here, see if he can't get out of the inning. He worked very efficiently through the first three innings. That'll help. 3-1, and that one fouled back. Good off-speed pitch. Three balls, two strikes. Now a punch out. A birdie's lounge strikeout would be huge here for the Warriors as he's looking for his first of the day. Will Thomas on the mound. Yeah, especially after getting behind in the count. 3-0. and oh, Good battle back here. At least give yourself a chance. Big 3-2 payoff pitch coming from Thomas. This one swung on. Sit way up into the air and out of play. I got it. And you listen for the windshield of the cars that are parked directly <laughs> behind the, the press players. box here. <laughs> players and some of our friends here in the press box. Yes. We're okay. Yes, we are. We are You'd just fine. Hammer. Bryce something. Harper would have to be here. The three-two. This one set up and foul out of play again. Rookie Allison. He went chasing at that one and stays alive though. That's similar to pitch what Wilson hit, kind of that high inside one. It looks really good. It's kind of right near your face, and it seems like you can get the barrel there. It's it looks just like a little a bit tougher too. It, it does. It looks like it you really can hit does. it 500 feet, and then you just can't. And now a little trip to the mound here from Seal to talk to his pitcher, Thomas, who's battling here. 50 pitches now. We've got a full count. Runners at second and third. The Bees looking to add on to now a 2 nothing lead. Well, yeah, the last couple of pitches been that high and inside one. He's gotten swinging at it. Maybe they go a little bit low and away here and see if he can't get him to chase. Thomas, big pitch here again. 3-2 payoff pitch coming home. That one misses. Breaking ball, ball four. Rookie Allison takes first. And the bases are loaded now for Carson Holroyd. He's 0 for 1 with a fly out here. And if you're Thomas, you're thinking, as Kyler Bush is going to come out to run for rookie Allison, you got to find a way to get it out. Because yep. if you don't, you've got Evan Huddleston on deck, and then in the hole is Caden Shanks. Looming. And I mean looming. As he tries to avoid a big inning. Well, the corners are going to be in, obviously. You try to get that force out at home. Holroyd shows bunt and gets it down into foul territory. Never mind, it was a fair ball. Was it fair? It was. And that will end the inning. Nope. Nope. Second out. It's a strike. My apologies. It's a strike. He missed it. I thought he fouled it down. And so he's going to be out as the runner it's came in on the squeeze. suicide squeeze play. I was sure that that was a foul ball, Jacob. My it was apologies. pretty close. It must have just missed it in the bunt. So now that's big as you got that mm -hmm. second out. Worsing retired, and it's an 0-1 count here to Holroyd. Looked like it bounced straight into the dirt, but he just missed it. Good job by Thomas there. He started in the windup and then smartly stepped off. Bouncing around. The runner over there at second. Holroyd this time going to swing away now with runners at first and second, and quickly 0-2. How quickly the complexion of an inning can change. Mm -hmm. You give up the couple of runs, and we said it. He's worked a couple of quick outs. It doesn't matter how you get them. It just matters that you get them, and now 0-2 and, and two outs. But again, good opportunity here for Holroyd to – Still got a runner in scoring position. It was a good job by Seal behind the plate to make that play as well to record that second out. Pitch in the Holroyd. That one misses upstairs, one and two. Big opportunity here for the Warriors to minimize the damage in what could have been a huge inning. One, two, coming home. That one swung on and missed. The birdies lounge strikeout for Will Thomas. 
The Bees do get the lead, but a good job to rally back as he strands two runners on. And we will head to the fifth. It's 2-0 Upperman. This is High School Baseball, presented by Nick's Restaurant on the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. Delicious pan pizza is Domino's best-kept secret. With locations in Smithville, Sparta, Livingston, All Good, and two in Cookville, delicious pan and hand-tossed pizza, pasta, and more is never far away. Use the Domino's app to take care of your game day eats today. Domino's is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing is proud to support student-athletes and athletic departments throughout the Upper Cumberland. They're also proud to sponsor the Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing Player of the Game on this broadcast. From trophies to t-shirts, they can do it all. Stop by and see them at 120 Circle Drive in Allgood or give them a call at 931-537-9559. Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing is proud to sponsor this broadcast on UCR Media Network. Eight nine one due up for the White County Warriors in this half inning. Upperman's lead is two nothing. Could have been a lot bigger. A good job by Will Thomas on the mound and the White County defense to make some plays. It was bases loaded with one out. They get out of that trouble. Jacob and Caden Shanks back to work on the mound. White County trying to solve him now. And they've gotten him on the base path a few times. I haven't had too many hits. Just the one hit. That infield single have not been able to barrel him up. However, he's going to give you opportunities. He may hit a batter. He may walk a batter. When you get those opportunities, you have to move them around and you have to get good chances. They've had a couple of times where they've been over at third base, just haven't been able to get him in. And that's a credit to Shanks on the mound, who's done a really good job. To your point, you know, single, hit by a pitch, and a walk for a three, four, five through the lineup. Then a strikeout and a ground out to first base gets him out of the jam, and that is the professionalism. But Caden Shanks out there doesn't blink with the adversity for White County. They've left four runners on the base path so far. They trail 2 nothing as we head to the fifth. This is the first of two, two full seven-inning game scheduled tonight. They moved it up, of course, in anticipation of the inclement weather tomorrow night. So in the next game, White County will be the home team. Upperman will be the road team, but other than that, we shouldn't have too long in between ball games. Stone Memorial up 7 to 1 in the bottom of the first in CrossFit. Big inning there. Still two runners on. Against their cross county rival. Goose is there tonight. I imagine that's Nick Osmond's game on Monday, but I've been wrong before. Maybe Talon heard. First pitch of the inning from Caden Shanks. Got him chasing that high cheese for strike one. Caden Siebers, the right fielder at the plate. Yeah, Cumberland County, they're still looking for their first win. Of course, Stone looking for their first win after taking two losses to this Upperman team. Oh, one. This one's barreled out of play. Foul and quickly ahead. Kane Shanks goes 0-2. Oh, he has six birdies lounge strikeouts so far through four innings of work. Pretty much right at his average. Actually, a little bit below his average right now. Shanks. Methodically delivers, breaking ball, called strike three. That's number seven, another birdies lounge strikeout for Caden Shanks. And that breaking ball is one of the best pitches in the Upper Cumberland. That is disgusting. Well, he sets it up. You go 88, you can go 84 on the changeup, 82 on the changeup, and then drop it all the way down to 73. And not only that, it just breaks so much as well. First pitch fastball blocked by Allison with the glove. It's 1-0 here to Sam Dykus. He struck out in his first plate appearance swinging. Austin Pionki is on deck as the lineup will turn over in this half inning for the Warriors looking to jumpstart a fifth inning rally. You know what we haven't done yet? This day in baseball history or trivia? Or trivia. We'll do trivia. We'll do trivia to kick off the bottom half of the fifth when we come back. So make sure you stick around for that. And then we'll do both in the second game. Perfect. Fastball across for Shanks, two and one. To me, it looks like Caden Shanks not trying to overthrow today. He's just putting it across the plate. You haven't seen him rev up that velocity, but a lot more controlled as that one's across. Now he evens the count up at two and two. Yeah, you mentioned it. You'll see him maybe April, May. He starts to kind of rear back a little bit, see him touch 90. Seen him at 88 so far today. 2-2 two -two breaking ball. Got him. Strike three is the check swing went around and back-to-back. -back. Birdies lounge strikeouts for Caden Shanks. Up to eight in the ball game. Through four and two thirds innings, yeah, and uh, it was interesting. Came in against French or against Stewart's Creek at Friendship Christian on Friday. We didn't have the velocity gun up, but it would wouldn't surprise me if he was he was throwing hard in that one inning, knowing he only had to go one inning, and he let it loose. Had some success as he got his first save of the year. He's two and zero with a save in three appearances. First pitch misses upstairs to Austin Pionki, and he's flown out and struck out so far. His numbers have been impressive. Only yeah. batting 280, but he's got a 500 on base percentage. That's ridiculous. He's been hit by a lot of pitches this year as the breaking ball misses upstairs 2 0. Yeah, that he's got seven walks drawn on the season as well. He has scored 10 runs so far. 
Got a lot of speed when he's able to get on. Two and two pitch, or two and oh pitch rather, coming home to him. Shanks rears back, this one's fouled back, and it's two and one. But again, we haven't seen any barrels on the baseball against Caden Shanks so far today. Nobody's really been able to time him up well, just that infield single that was right back up the middle that actually bounced over Shanks on the mound. Two and one coming home here. Breaking ball. Nearly hit him on the shoulder, but it dipped in just in time, and it's three and one. Yeah, that one started at his head and kind of dropped a little bit. He almost turned into it. Pionki at the batter's box. Here comes the 3-1 home from Shanks. That one misses outside, ball four, and a two-out walk work. White County has game-tying run at the plate. It's Kaysen Seal. He's 0-for-2 with a couple of strikeouts, both swinging so far. Now Caden Shanks is at 71 pitches. I mentioned you're going to see him on Friday in Alabama, so they can let him let go. Him go. Yeah. He can go until Especially not a, playing tomorrow. Range. And Kaysen Seal, he's got a little bit of power. He doesn't hit anything out yet. Of course, they play in that big park in Sparta as well. But three extra base hits. He's got seven runs driven in. First pitch in from Shanks. He swings at this one, sends it way up into the infield. This one's going to get caught in the wind a little bit. Juju Yano trying to find it, tracks with it, and he makes the catch. And that will retire the side. We'll head to the bottom half of the fifth and have trivia when we come back. It's Upperman 2, White County 0. This is High School Baseball presented by Nick's Restaurant on the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. Frontier Chevrolet is ready to get you into your next vehicle and are proud to offer a lifetime powertrain warranty on nearly all vehicles below 80,000 miles. View inventory online at www.caseychevy.com, including the brand new Chevy Trax and Traverse. Or stop in at 2350 Cookville Highway today. Remember, don't buy till you see Jason Fye. I'm looking for someone who can keep me comfortable. Stay here for the long run, and definitely not high maintenance. Not right. Absolutely not. This one looks perfect. Find your perfect match with Hiller. Get a free UV light with select new HVAC systems, 50% off a descaler with new tankless water heaters, or free surge protection with a new whole home generator. I like that one too. Nine one two, do up for the Upperman Bees in this half inning as what should be our new national anthem blaring out once again here in the bottom of the fifth inning. What's wrong with our national anthem? Our national anthem is wonderful, but we could have one A one B with Rocky Top. <laughs> Back to work as Will Thomas on the mound. It's time for trivia with Jacob Vincent. Which one do you want? Do you want the easier one or harder one? Let's go easy. Let's let's open okay. it up. But you say that, I'm going to get this one wrong. Uh, so this one, actually, there are two right answers. Okay. What player holds the career record for being hit by pitches? Yeah, this is the easy one. Craig Biggio, Jason Kendall, Huey Jennings, or Tommy Tucker? Once again, what player holds the career record for being hit by pitches? Craig Biggio, Jason Kendall, Huey Jennings, or Tommy Tucker? Two right answers. Let us know in the comments what your answer is. Don't cheat. Don't look on Google. And by the way... The fact that that's your easy one is ridiculous because there's nothing about that question that's easy. <laughs> that's either you know it or you don't. There's no context clues to be able to use on that one. And they're probably one, two, three, and four, knowing how the options get put together. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Unbelievable. So even if you're in the right area code, you could be wrong on trivia. You get a 50% ch chance this time rather than 25 at least. <laughs> Evan Huddleston's over for one for the fly I guess out. 33. I don't know math. He flew out to right field in his first appearance. He's ahead to count 1-0 here against Will Thomas. He's at pitch number 57 as he delivers this one in. This one's flared out in the foul territory. A long way to go for Everett. He's making his way there, lays out, and can't make the catch. And that is a loud strike number one. Well, we've seen Case and Seal behind the plate make a couple of really nice catches down that first baseline over his shoulder, kind of over his head, and able to make the grab a couple of times. One and one. Evan Huddleston awaits Caden Shanks on deck with Justin Fallon in the hole. 9 1 2 in this half inning. That pitch misses low and outside. 2 and 1. And Huddleston, you just want to become a. Base runner, mm -hmm. whatever way you can for those big bats at the top of the order. He's done that for the most part. Upperman leads 2-0 to zero here in this one. 2-1 to Huddleston. Swing on that one. Comes up empty-handed, 2-2 two and two for Thomas. Well, I mean, this has been the best outing so far of the year for Thomas. Again, he's had some pretty good numbers, but again, he's not even their ace coming into this game. It has been Trenton Wilson so far. 
2-2 pitch. This one swung on. A little late decision it looked like. Able to get enough of it to stay alive was Evan Huddleston. It's still just the 60 pitches as well. And really solid. Just the kind of those two runs, but able to bounce back after them. Still in the first inning, Stone Memorial leads Cumberland County 10-1 in that rivalry matchup. Here comes the 2-2. This one swung on by Huddleston. Sent out. Seabers has to range up. It's in the Bermuda Triangle a little bit, but Seabers calls everybody off and makes the catch for the first out of the inning. Here comes that man, Caden Shanks, looking to get it rolling. He's 0 for 2 so far, and he will stride in here. Now, there's been two outs in that game for quite some time. So two runs on five hits for Upperman so far. They've left three runners on the base paths. One error in the field for White County. That game started at 5.30, by the way. And they are still in the first inning. First pitch in, misses low here to Shanks, 1-0. and oh. So third time through the lineup now. It was Fallon kicking off the rally back in the fourth inning. Shanks trying to jumpstart it here in the fifth. Thomas wants to keep it right where it is. That pitch across, misses low, 2-0. Livingston and DeKalb County knotted up at zero through two innings. Just two hits for the Wildcats. 16 districts, so every night there's three games going on across 7 AAA. The 2 0. This one going after it like a six iron, two and one. Looked like you this morning. Yeah, it went right. <laughs> Just keeps going and going and going. You want a slice? I'm your guy. Somebody goes sprinting out of the Sparta dugout. I mean, sprinting for that ball. Gotta stay warm. The 2-1, that is a good pitch. On the outside corner, two balls, two strikes. He ran all the way down to where the tarp is held and now is running back a little bit less fast. <laughs> He's trying into the wind. Here comes the 2-2 to Caden Shanks. Swings at this one, sends it over towards Everett at first, and he fields it cleanly and jogs over to the bag. Two up, two down. Again, Will Thomas. He's looked really, really good in this ball game. Well, the other part to that, too, is the defense for White County has been really solid. There's been no mishaps so far. The ground balls have been routinely fielded. The fly balls have been routinely fielded, with the exception of the one that just got caught up in the air, but there's really nothing you could do about that one. So they've done a really good job when the balls have been put in play. They've been able to get to them. Justin Fallon is two for two with a double and a single. First pitch breaking <laughs> ball. That's the best pitch of the game for Will Thomas across for strike one. Yeah, just a looper. Even Fallon kind of backed away from it a little bit, and again, that wind... Playing a little bit of a factor into it. The 0-1 coming to Justin Fallon. This time he sends it Fallon. A strike away from working a clean 1-2-3 inning is Will Thomas. As Sparta is battling here. Yeah, what a bounce back it's been after giving up the two runs. You, you know you're going to have to face the top of the lineup coming up and able to at least get through to this point. 0-2 pitch to Fallon. This is a fastball. Misses a tick low and outside. Gets a little groan from the Sparta faithful. One side and two. from the uh, breath of fresh air from the other side. <laughs> I think he did miss. As here comes the 1-2. This one swung on and missed. A birdies lounge strikeout for Will Thomas in a strong 1-2-3 inning worked by him. We will head to the sixth. Still 2-0 Upperman. Coverage of this game is presented by Nick's Restaurant. But first... Answer their trivia question from Jacob Vincent. What's your answer? Well, let me ask it again. again. Yes. What player holds the career record for being hit by pitches? Craig Biggio, Jason Kendall, Huey Jennings, or Tommy Tucker? I'm going to guess Craig Biggio. You're partly correct. That is, one of, that is one of the right answers. They're tied. Not partly, no, but no, no, I'm no. fully correct. Two, so Huey Jennings was hit by 287 pitches. However, he played... From 1891 to 1918, so before the okay, modern yeah. era of baseball, that count. Biggio at 285, two pitches behind him. So you were correct. I'm fully correct. And there is a new pitcher for the Upper Men Bees. The Hall Sports and Outdoors call to the bullpen when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Steel Technologies has been part of the Rutherford County community for over 35 years. Their plants in Murfreesboro and Smyrna include over 150 teammates who process coils, metal sheets, and blanks for customers across North America. Steel Tech Smyrna and Murfreesboro plants are expanding, and they need teammates to join their team. With openings including machine and forklift operators, truck drivers, and more, they have the position for you with competitive wages and monthly bonus opportunities. For more information and to apply online, scan the QR code on your screen now. Steel Tech is a proud sponsor of this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Steel Tech. Faith, family, steel tech. 
From the sports field to the hunting field, our friends at Hall Sports and Outdoors can outfit anyone. Located in the heart of Jamestown at 207 South Main Street, Hall Sports and Outdoors carries everything from kayaks, fishing gear, and camo to guns and ammo. With top brands such as Columbia, Timberland, Under Armour, Asics, and much more, nobody can top their selection. Need some custom gear for your team? They also offer uniforms, gear, and custom embroidery. Stop by and see them at 207 South Main Street in Jamestown. Hall Sports and Outdoors, proud sponsor of this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. A Hall Sports and Outdoors call to the bullpen for the Upperman Bees. They give the ball to the lefty ETSU signee Wyatt Curtis. He will take the ball here, tasked with slamming the door, and he is looking for a get-right performance in a major, major way. But it ends the day for Caden Shanks, who was great. Five innings pitched, one hit, no runs, eight strikeouts, three walks, 72 pitches thrown. Leaves him available a day earlier when they get to Hoover, Alabama. Wyatt Curtis, though, 0-1 on the year. He's made four appearances, started two games. He has a 14 earned run average. He's allowed 13 earned runs in 14 hits in just six and a third innings, 12 strikeouts, nine walks. One of those is greatly inflated as the first pitch in misses low and outside versus the Blessed Trinity squad out of Georgia, which um, is like the Atlanta Braves in high school equivalencies. So, I mean, C.J. Abrams just played for him a few years ago. So The 1-0, he pitched three good innings against Stone Memorial last week, and then the wheels fell off just a little bit of grand slam by Nick Osmond. But the last time... He was really dominant, was against this Sparta team yeah. when he threw a no-hitter a year ago. 1-1 one, one pitch in is a fastball. This one's fouled back. And Jack Everett, it's the heart of the order. 3-4-5 due up in this half inning for Sparta trailing 2-0 for Curtis. When he's throwing well, he's got as good a stuff as mm -hmm. anybody. They're getting the upper 80s, low 90s with the fastball. Breaking ball as well. 1-2 fastball misses low and outside. He can mix them up. He's got as good a stuff as anybody in this area and beyond. It's just about getting that consistency. Here comes the 2-2 home. This one misses low and outside. And now Jack Everett, who's one for two with a single and a ground out, trying to kickstart a rally and become a base runner. He was able to get the only really hit off of Shanks earlier on. 3-2 payoff pitch from Curtis. This one called strike three. A birdie's lounge strikeout on the outside corner with a fastball by Wyatt Curtis. And to bring up Eli Smith. He's walked and has been hit by a pitch so far. And he will stand in here against Curtis, who needs to tie his shoe. Sitting right around 84 miles an hour, and he's got a lot of tail on that fastball as well. He's working on the outside part of the plate. We'll see if that changes here to a right-handed batter who's on the left-handed batter that time. We're going to fix the camera once again here, but... Wyatt Curtis toes the rubber. He's going to deliver home to Smith. The first pitch misses low, 1-0. Not sure why it's doing that glitchy thing, but we'll change the outlets in between games. He had 87 that time. Yeah, he can he can get into the 90s, much like Shanks. He probably he won't today, but as they continue to get loose, as that one's across for a strike, 1-2. One 1-1. And two. One and one. One and one. Eli, you'll see why ETSU fell in love with Wyatt Curtis on some of these pitches. As the 1-1 one -one comes home, there's the fastball waved at and missed just like that one, 1-2. One yeah, it's that four seam and the two seam going back and forth, 88 that time, and then you drop it down to the two seam about 84. One, two, that one misses a tick low, and that's down to 85. That velocity change, you, if you're a college coach and you're at a camp and you see tall kid that's a lefty that can mix up speeds like that, yep, you'll be in as there's that breaking ball, and it's full again, three balls, two strikes here to Eli Smith. Yeah, and you mentioned it, when he's on and when he can hit his spots, he is just so, so hard to hit. 3-2, payoff pitch coming home. Fastball swung on, barreled up into center field, but Justin Fallon makes it look easy as he ranges to his right to make the catch. Two up, two down for Wyatt Curtis, and this is another example. I think you're, you're seeing some anticipation. They're going to want Wyatt Curtis to probably start a game in Alabama. He pitches keep today in this one. You could see Justin Fallon later on for that reason, but you keep him fresh in limited innings. Rookie Allison starts game two for him. I mentioned they're going to treat that set of games in Alabama are real serious against some of the top teams in the area or in the southeast as the first pitch is across for a strike in to Jonathan Boswell he is 0 for 1 officially today with a strikeout and a walk 0 1 to Boswell he sends this one over right at the second baseman who makes the catch Juju Yano who's back at second base moves over to make the grab and Wyatt Curtis works a quick 1-2-3 inning 
and Sparta will have three outs remaining in the next half inning. But the Bees looking to add some insurance when we come back. Coverage of this game presented by Nick's Restaurant and the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. complicated. Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. We work with independent agents who keep insurance simple, so you can worry about more important things, like figuring out what's growing in that cup holder. That's simple human sense. Visit SwallowsInsurance.com or call us today, 931-526-4025. Protecting your future, it's what we do. Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate just listed this new construction home located in the Brookstone subdivision. With 2,075 square feet, three bedrooms, and large walk-in closets, the main level primary bedroom has one of the best features ever. In addition to the hallway access, you can access the laundry room through the closet in the bedroom. The kitchen also features an island, a pantry, and stainless steel appliances. All cabinets throughout the house are soft clothes and have granite countertops. For more information, call Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate at 931-979-7145 or 931-526-9581. Always ask for Sonia Brown. Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Will Thomas has thrown 70 pitches, and probably 65 of them have been really, really good in this ball game. He stands in again, facing off against the heart of this upperman order. 3-4-5, due up. Alec Wilson will lead things off. The Bees looking for insurance for Wyatt Curtis, who looked good, and they need him to look good. They need him to bounce back. They want to be a key part of this rotation, <clears throat> moving through the district play and into the postseason. Alec Wilson stands in here. He's one for two with an RBI double so far. First pitch for Thomas, misses inside, and Wilson putting that new knee to the test as he jumps <laughs> out of the way. Not, not necessarily new, just improved. Yeah, new, the million dollar, $6 million man out yeah. there. Alec Wilson, the 1-0. His dad's in the press box. I'm sure he agrees with that dollar figure as this is found <laughs> out of play one and one. That $6 million knee over there for Alec Wilson down there. <laughs> One one pitch coming here. A good one, but it misses just a tick inside. And that, that's been the key today for Will Thomas. He's, you know, he's not throwing very hard, Jacob, but he's mixing up the spots really well. Coming inside, coming out, going up and down throughout the zone. The two one. You think about that RBI double for Wilson. Ninety five percent of the times, that's a strike. He was able to barrel it up chest high and get his hands through it. That's just an elite hitter making a big play. Thomas has been good. Here's the 3-1, though. He doesn't want to allow Upperman to add on to their lead. Breaking ball. This one's fouled back, and we go to 3-2. and two. How many walks has he had today? It hasn't been too many, if any. Yeah, that, Maybe he one? Had one back in the fourth inning, and that's yeah. it. One walk he's so been, far. I mean, he's been in, in command, in control of his pitches so far, and he's been in a few of these full counts, but been able to get out of him for the most part. 3-2. Nice breaking oh. ball. Called strike three for the Birdies Lounge strikeout. That's a good pitch by Will Thomas for, as he struck out two straight batters. That is now three on the day. He didn't have any through the first four and two thirds. Has three since then. Yeah, well, you and I were kind of talking in between innings just how good of an outing this has been. He's only at 76 pitches here in the bottom of the sixth. First pitch into Worsing misses low. Chris Worsing had an RBI single and a run scored in the fourth inning. Grounded out back in the first. He's going to be a special player. You can tell already. 1-0, that one misses away. You've got the two seniors with Curtis and Shanks, then the host of juniors, and you see behind them who's the next two-way star. You're looking right at it in there in that right-handed batter's box. Two-zero pitch coming to Worsing as the Lady Bees just had a big softball play behind us. Yep. We can't see it. They put a window to our left, and I promise you I could call two games at once. I could do the softball in the baseball game. Somebody... Call Mr. Fanning, the AD, and tell him, put a window right here, and I will call two at once. We'll have some fun with that. 3 0 pitch coming at the same time. That one called strike. It looked a bit low, but they get the call at 3 0. It's 3 1. There's enough dead space in baseball and softball. We can make that work. That'd be a fun little challenge. I wouldn't do it every time, but every once in a while. With the zoom in camera for the softball field. 3 1. That one misses inside. Ball four, and Chris Worsing works a one out walk. Bring up Juju Yano. He's one for two with a single so far. 
There's some chocolate chip cookies in the uh, press box yeah, right now. And they the, smell The Baxter phenomenal. Bullets Little League concession stand. They fire up those chocolate chip cookies, and they are on the next oh, yeah. level. Although it doesn't, it's not hard to impress me with a chocolate chip cookie, but they are very good. Throw over to first. Worsing is back in time. 81 pitches now for Will Thomas. They really, regardless of the outcome here, mm. if he can pitch a complete game, helps yep. him tremendously in anticipation of game two. Absolutely. Checks over his shoulder a couple of times, kicks and deals. Pitch catches the outside corner for a strike, 72 miles an hour, 0 and 1. And these are the kinds of pitchers that have given up him in trouble with the, the 80-plus mile an hour guys, they've been able to turn on pretty frequently, but not these slower pitchers. Yeah, and he's been able to hit his spots as well. That's been the big thing. He's not throwing it over the plate. He's throwing on the edges. At high school low. baseball, location is much more important than velocity. Yeah. Now you get these guys who can do both, and you've got the superstars. But if you can pinpoint it, you'll be just fine. One and one coming to Juju Yano. couple of glances over now. Pitch in, and he rips this one into center field for a base hit. Juju Yano, that one came in on the hands, and he was able to get the barrel to it. And it's a one-out single, and now Carson Shoup has the ability to do some damage. And this is what we said it last time. It was this group of players who was able to get on, get around, bring home those first couple of runs, and that's been the difference in the ballgame right now. Well, we've talked about how Coach Shanks kind of shifted the lineup around after that 5 nothing loss to Friendship Christian and balanced it out. you got the big bats at the top, but these guys get on base. Mm -hmm. Worsing, Yano, Shoup, Allison gives them a, more of an ability to string hits together, which is what they were lacking a little bit. Uh, look to do that here with runners at first and second. Shoop 0 for 2 today with a couple of ground outs. Thomas kicks and deals. He's looking for the breaking ball. Didn't come out clean, and it's 1 and 0. I know it's getting warmer a little bit outside because the flies are coming mm, out, yeah. and I do not get along with flies. The wasps? Yeah, the wasp. That wasp is dead now in between the Very windows. Very dead. Todd Idelson. Two on with one out. Pitch comes in to shoot, misses upstairs. There was a wasp, ladies and gentlemen, and we pinned it in between the window panes here as we opened it up, and uh, it's run out of oxygen, much to the success of what we were looking for. Runners at first and second for Carson Shoup. We're not going to get demonetized on YouTube. By the way, we're live on the main Facebook page and YouTube channel as that one bounces in to Shoup, and he goes ahead three balls, no strikes. And this has really been the first inning of action where he has kind of lost that control a little bit. First couple of batters deep in the counts, now a couple of runners on. 87 pitches. You can yep. see a little bit of that fatigue starting to set in. Shoup trying to put the pressure on. 3-0 count, probably the red light special, and it bounces in, ball four. And here comes rookie Allison trying to put the dagger in. Bases loaded now for the Bees. One out, and we are in the bottom of the sixth inning. Chris Worsing, he's at third. Juju Yano is at second. And Carson Shoup is at first. Coach Thompson coming out. And it may be time for a Hall Sports and Outdoors call to the bullpen. They really would love to not do that, as we talked about earlier. And yeah. there will be a pitching change here for the White County Warriors. New pitcher when we come back. Upperman looking to put it away with a 2-0 lead. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>
Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate just listed this new construction home located in the Brookstone subdivision. With 2,075 square feet, three bedrooms, and large walk-in closets, the main level primary bedroom has one of the best features ever. In addition to the hallway access, you could access the laundry room through the closet in the bedroom. The kitchen also features an island, a pantry, and stainless steel appliances. All cabinets throughout the house are soft clothes and have granite countertops. For more information, call Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate at 931-979-7145 or 931-526-9581. Always ask for Sonia Brown. Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. It's a Hall Sports and Outdoors call to the bullpen for the White County Warriors, and they're looking to get out of a jam as the shortstop Austin Pionki will go to the mound here. He's got the bases loaded with one out and a very good hitter, rookie Allison at the dish, and that will nearly close the book on Will Thomas. He pitched five and a third innings, and he was good tonight. Three strikeouts, three walks, six hits, two runs, both of them earned, but he is responsible for all three runners on the base pass. It was a walk to Chris Worsing, a single by Juju Yano, and then a walk by Carson Shoup. And there is a runner at every bag right now for the Bees as they lead 2-0 here in the bottom of the sixth. In the first of two, we're going to have a doubleheader. So maybe 10, 15 minutes after the conclusion of this one, we will have game number two. We know that Upperman is giving the ball to rookie Allison. We're going to get a sidearm right-handed pitcher. We have no clue who White County is going with on the mound, and we're going to find out. But very similar. Pionki going to check in. He's going to be in the low 70s with the fastball, try to make it, mix in a breaking ball. That worked for Will Thomas. Just lost a little bit of control once he got to about 85 pitches. Yeah, Pionki 75 on the gun, at least on the fastball. He's appeared in four games so far this season, seven and two-thirds. He's got a one-and-one one record. He has 13 strikeouts to just five walks in his seven and two-thirds of an innings pitched in his ERA at 4.57. So about the same numbers as uh, Thomas. I thought he may be the one to get the ball in game number two. Yeah. It looks like he will not be the guy to get the ball. In, although, maybe. Could. <laughs> we'll see. No, you absolutely <laughs> yeah. can. Remember, that pitch count yeah. applies just to the day. day. So if he comes in and throws 30 pitches or so here, he can absolutely start game two with a quick break in between. They're going to be the home team as well. So it won't be a super long layoff in between mm -hmm. games if you want to go to the same guy. Like we mentioned, we know it's going to be rookie Allison in game number two. But honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if White Curtis keeps throwing well if they go with yeah. him. First pitch into Allison. This one is misses for a ball, 1-0. and and, But, again, Upperman has more things on their mind because of what's coming up in Hoover, Alabama. So they've got their kind of pitching rotation baked in. I know they were working on it earlier doing some scouting. Infield in at the corners here for White County. Middle infield at double play depth. That one waved at and missed, 1-1. One one. Livingston Academy has taken a 1-0 lead on DeKalb County in the middle of the fourth. No hitter going for him on the mound. And you just jinxed parent. it right there. You just jinxed it. No such thing. The 1-1. One, one. This one swung on set over right at the shortstop, and they're going to turn two. Nicely done out there for the middle infield of White County, and they get out of the bases loaded. Jam, they need two runs to extend game number one. Can they do it? We'll find out when we come back. Coverage of this game presented by Nick's Restaurant on the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. Fire and Vine in Cookville is the Upper Cumberland's home for delicious Chicago-style pizza, beef, chicken, fish, and more. Located in Cookville's historic downtown district, Fire and Vine's food and atmosphere will keep you coming back for more. Take in stunning views with creative food and drinks on the rooftop. Fire and Vine is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Clint Connor is your local auctions expert. With full service from start to finish, the Exit Crossroads Auction Group are here to make the process easy for you. Visit CrossroadsAuctionGroup.com for more details and current auctions. Clint Connor, your local auctions expert, is proud to sponsor this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. The Crouch Team with Highlands Elite Real Estate proudly presents this gorgeous home on Cross Point Drive. Boasting four bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms with nearly 2,000 square feet, this home in the Prescott School District in Cookville could be your forever home. Call 931-979-1191 for more information and to schedule a showing or visit chatandamycrouch.com. The Crouch Team with Highlands Elite Real Estate is proud to sponsor this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Wyatt Curtis back to work, looking to close the game out. White County, they're battling in. They got six, seven, eight due up in this half inning, needing two runs to extend, three to take the lead here in the top of the seventh inning. Game one of a doubleheader so far for the Warriors. Defensively, 
They've been really good offensively against these two Division One pitchers. Haven't been able to muster it up. Yeah, and not too many teams really do find a lot of success against this defense, and White Curtis has come on and he pitched pretty well. He had to pitch around some of those balls and, fit and going outside of the zone, but able to go that clean inning in that last inning. And you said it too, it's kind of an opportunity for him here to uh, get right appearance for him, and then they're probably going to need him later. They are going to need him later on this week, especially when they go the four games down in Alabama. And what a better way to do it here in district play. And you need him to pitch pitch well, well here to get a win. Yeah, four games in three days, you're going to need everybody. Everybody's going to pitch yep. in Hoover. Everybody. If you can pitch, you're going to pitch in those four games. As first in is Will Thomas. Pitch misses outside 1-0. and oh. If you're White County, one base runner, two base runners. Yep. Trying to put the pressure on here need. and make it really interesting here and try to pull the upset. 1-0 pitch. This is a fastball sent up and out of play. 1-1. One and one. We don't anticipate any live streams tomorrow night because of the inclement weather that is blowing in, but we'll have plenty uh, resuming on Thursday night. Or Thursday, yes, Thursday night, 7 o'clock. We will be in Hoover. Jake? We'll be somewhere. Who knows where? We'll find we'll out. Figure it out. This one's found out of play, one and two. Yeah. Going to let the inmates run the asylum for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> I head down to the worst state in the union. The one, two, this one swung on and. Missed for strike three. Allison will throw down the first in time, and it's a birdies lounge strikeout, the second for Wyatt Curtis, and he's retired the first four batters that he's seen. Cole Gentry trying to solve him as he strides in. Is Texas considered part of the union? When you Okay, we're talking about the, the union. reformed union. We're not oh, talking okay. about the Civil War. Okay. Alabama is the worst state in the United States of America is what, what I'm saying. That's, got, that's what I'm saying. They got some good golf courses. It is America's they got toilet. Some, they got well, some I'll good find golf the golf courses. courses. It is America's toilet. The Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail. It Tremendous. It is the worst place in the world. Is that pitch misses is low? Afghanistan, Alabama. One A, one B. That's the O one pitch. That's a fastball waved at it and missed. O and two. A bold. Statement. We'll watch some good baseball down there. Yeah. We'll yeah, have yeah. some fun. But don't expect me to say any good things and don't expect me to be wearing anything other than orange as the 0-2 pitch from Curtis. This one's checked over. 0-2 again. I may wear orange pants. I'm going to get one of those checkerboarded overalls. Oh, get the candy stripes. And break those out. Get the candy stripes. Playing Rocky Top on repeat. <laughs> anyway, it's an 0-2 count here. Sorry, I got distracted. Cole Gentry at the plate. Trying to stave off final two outs here for the Warriors. They battled tough but trail 2-0. to zero. Curtis delivers on the 0-2. This one's right down Main Street. Called strike three. Another birdies lounge strikeout. 85 miles an hour on the two-seamer. And the Warriors down to their final strike or out here in game number one. Tell you what, he looks pretty good. <laughs> Listen, it's not a question about the stuff. If he can, if he gets rolling, you can forget about it. Mm -hmm. He will bury you. There's no question about it. And Wyatt Curtis, five up, five down here in relief. Yeah, he's throwing downhill right now. Here comes Caden Sievers. There's no announcer jinx according to Jacob Vincent Not. as the first pitch is across for a strike 0-1. Contrary to the, the get, peanut gallery blame it, here. Blame it on me, I guess. Up here in Baxter. As Curtis delivers home the 0-1, this one, yeah, this is about to be over. 0-2. Thought there was an announcer jinx. You can see that he is keeping him really off balance right now. Wyatt Curtis for the win. Got him. A birdies lounge strikeout. He strikes out the side, and that will do it in game number one. Final score, Upperman 2, White County 0. We welcome you into the South Willow Auto Clinic postgame show. The South Willow Auto Clinic are your hometown auto doctors. Caden Shanks gets the win on the mound as he goes five complete or four complete innings, rather. Strikes out eight batters, walks just three, allows one hit, zero runs. Wyatt Curtis, two zeros up on the score where he strikes out four batters and retires all six that he faces offensively in the game for Upperman. Alec Wilson with a two RBI double. Chris Worsing goes one for two with an RBI single. Alec Wilson also scored a run. Justin Fallon, two for three with a double and a single. Juju Yano goes two for three with a couple of singles in this game. And the Bees improve to six and three on the year with the victory. It's time for the Nelson Trophy and screen printing player of the game. Jacob Vincent, who's it going to tonight? I think I'm going to go Caden Shanks. Five innings, just the one hit. 
And especially in a close ball game like this one, defensively, they needed him to be good. Eight strikeouts, had a few walks in there, but didn't allow anything of solid contact to get through it. Of course, he had Justin Fallon had a good day at the plate as well, and he was the one that kind of got the offense going in this ball game. But I'm, I'm going to go with Kane Jenks because they needed him. The bats weren't quite there today, and that's a credit to Thomas on the other side, but they needed a good outing on the mound. They got that from Shanks, and they also got it from Curtis in relief as well. But Shanks is your Nelson Trophy and screen printing player of the game. Caden Shanks, he did go five innings pitched. I said four. I was wrong. Five innings pitched for Caden Shanks, and he is the Nelson Trophy and screen printing player of the game for the third time this season. Well, we're going to put the intermission graphic on this screen, and when we come back a few minutes from now, we'll have a Crouch Team with Highlands Elite Real Estate pregame show, and then all the action in game number two. White County falls to three and seven. They are one and two in the district. Upperman improves to six and three, and they are three and zero oh in seven AAA. Much more to come. You can keep it pinned here. Of course, we're live on YouTube as well if you want to play it in the background. And of course, and then I'm going to reshare the post, so I will share. Join us for game two on the main Upper Cumberland Reporter Facebook page. About a 15-minute or so intermission we anticipate here in Baxter. Final score in game number one, Upperman gets it done 2-0. to zero. Much more to come. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back. It's time for another Crouch Team with Highlands Elite Real Estate pregame show. Game number two between Upperman and Sparta. The Bees victorious just a few moments ago, 2-0. to zero. Now it flips. White County will be the home team. Upperman, the road team on their home field. Of course, the doubleheader because of the inclement weather that we expect to blow through the area tomorrow night. So we have a second seven-inning game. The Bees just victorious 2-0, to zero, as we mentioned. Hard-fought baseball game. Sparta wants to do that again and get over the hump as Upperman has now won 20 straight games in the district, dating back to a couple of seasons ago. Sparta, though? Played them tighter than anybody has in recent years. That was a hard-fought game, Jacob Vinson. But for Opperman, this is where they hope their depth of pitching really comes into play. Yeah, you see it a lot in that second game. And I'll give a tip of the cap to Stone Memorial because we said that last week as well in a close ball game in the first one. We didn't know if they were going to be able to replicate that in the second one. But Talon Hurd had a really good outing on the mound. It's going to be Jack Everett for White County here in this one. They are going to be the home team as well. So uh, they're going to need some good outings. And it's funny, when you look at this White County pitching staff, of course, you've got Trenton Wilson, who's got the best numbers, a 3-4-2 ERA and 14 and a third innings pitched. And unfortunately, not with the team today. Everybody outside of that seems like they have about a 4-5-6 ERA, and we've seen that for the last three pitchers or so, and Everett is right in there among them. Let's get to the Swallows Insurance starting lineups on the mound for the White County Warriors. The South Paul lefty, Jack Everett, gets the ball. He's struck out 10 batters, walked six so far. He has a 4.57 earn run average with an 0 run one record. This is his second game starting this season. He's pitched in three and two-thirds innings pitched so far this year. He will face an upperman lineup that will bat one through nine like this. Caden Shanks will lead it off the shortstop followed up by the center fielder Justin Fallon. Alec Wilson will bat third. Chris Worsing, the third baseman, will bat cleanup. The batting fifth tonight is the second baseman Juju Yano. Batting sixth catching in this game is Carson Shoup and that is because batting seventh is the starting pitcher rookie Allison. Batting eighth is the right fielder Carson Holroyd and batting ninth is the left fielder Evan Huddleston. In the field, a couple of changes as well for the White County Warriors with Jack Everett going to the mound, catching the balls and strikes. Once again, is Kaysen Steele over at first base, replacing Everett, will be Trenton Wilson. So he is here, but he is not pitching in this game, did not play in game number one, maybe late. Who knows? That's total speculation. We don't know why he didn't play in game number one. Eli Smith once again gets the start at second base. The third baseman is Will Thomas. Shortstop is Austin Pionki. In left field for Sparta, it is Sam Dykus. In center, or pardon me, left fielder is Wyatt Dilt. The center fielder is Sam Dykus. And out in right field is going to be Caden Siebers. Caden Jack- Shanks will stride in, looking to get it rolling here. Jack Efford has thrown seven and two-thirds. My handwriting is just atrocious. Yeah, that, I was reading his, so we're going to blame that one on Jake. It's I'm, absolutely I'm not going to own that one. This That's on me. Caden Shanks stepping in. He, Nelson Trophy and screen printing in the first game, largely because of his work on the mound, trying to get it rolling there in the batter's box. The first pitch is a strike on the outside corner. Different umpire. We love the strike zone in game number one. That's great. We would love to love it again here in game number two as the second pitch is coming in here from Jack Everett. 74 on the gun on that fastball. There's that breaking ball. Shanks puts a swing on this one into center field, turning and running back, and that's going to get down for Caden Shanks to the warning track, and this is going to be an easy triple as he rounds second and heads towards third. They may send him home. No, he will (laughs) dive in, and it is a leadoff triple for Caden Shanks. He's looking to get it rolling in the batter's box. Well, he has his second triple in the last three games. Uh, I feel like he's led in triples. I think he leads. Is it not a career record for yes, triples for him? In, yeah, in he's already history. got a couple of them already so far this season. Just burns the center fielder who immediately had to start sprinting back and a great start for the Bees. Yeah, no chance out there in center field for Dykus. And now first pitch in to Justin Fallon. Misses low. Seal so had to block it to hold the runner at third. Upperman they struggle a little bit offensively. In that first game, they would love to get an early lead here and put the pressure on and give rookie Allison some run support. Everett delivers the 1-0. This one's going to be ripped. Second baseman can't get there, and it's an RBI for Justin Fallon, and the Bees look fully warmed up. Fallon takes a big turn as they bobble it a little bit in center. Now retreats back. Two batters. Two base hits, and it's one nothing Upperman. Yeah, it was a really good battle in game number one, but now the Bees got that game underneath their belt. They've kind of timed up these pitchers a little bit, and they've gotten a great start on Everett here for Wine County. And that's one of the things with this Sparta roster of pitchers. They're all throwing about the same velocity. So once you key in on that, as this is a left-hander, that changes things a little bit. First pitch into Wilson, misses inside for ball one. But once you start timing up that velocity, you can look out. And this is a powerful lineup, as we know. 
Yeah, once you get that timing down, and obviously you got to get the pitcher's mechanics down as well, and their timing just how they deliver the baseball. Runner takes off. This one bounces in, and Justin Fallon can round second and head to third. It's a domino stolen base, and then he advances to third on the wild pitch. And just like that, Upperman threatening to tie their run total from game number one as Justin Fallon is 90 feet away. Yeah, and Justin Fallon got a huge jump on that pitch as well. And then, like you said, it got all the way to the backstop. Of course, very deep backstop here in Baxter. He was into third standing up and just 90 feet away from tying it up that they did in the first, just three batters in. Three for three now on stolen bases. Advances over on the wild pitch. The 2-0, that one is across for a strike. Two and one for Alec Wilson. For Wilson... He's batting 333 and an RBI back in game number one. Everett's just trying to get settled in. The 2 1. That one bounces in. A good block behind the plate, but quickly 3 and 1. And now you run into the problem of a lineup that has no gaps. Right behind is Chris Worsing, who leads the team in batting average in that cleanup spot. 3 and 1. Everett trying to figure out. As he nearly, I think he got away with the ball. He delivers home the 3-1 instead. This one is swung on, chopped over. It's going to be enough to score a run. Second baseman slides, makes the catch, throws over to first in time for the out. But it's an RBI for Alec Wilson. And the Bees already lead 2-0. to There's the first out of the game. And again for the Bees, striking first here as they are the visiting team technically in this ball game as this ball game is supposed to be played tomorrow night. And impending weather coming in, they're playing it tonight just to get it over with so they don't have to postpone it or anything. So the away team and striking first early on. Mentioned Chris Worsing. He leads the team in batting average now up to 385 after what he did in game number one where he went one for two officially with an RBI. He also walked once. He stands in here, first pitch missed for a ball. 1-0 to the 6-3 freshman. Good breaking ball thrown in there from Everett for a strike. 1-1. One one. Everett throwing the fastballs and then those breaking balls in. Here comes the 1-1 one one in to Worsing. That one bounces. 2-1. This is now 23-1 to one at Stone Memorial taking on Cumberland County. One out here. We're in the top of the first inning in Baxter. 2-1, that one misses inside. Now Worsing goes ahead 3-1, and, and another dangerous hitter. Juju Yano is in the on-deck circle. Livingston leading DeKalb County 2-0 to zero in the middle of the sixth. Softball score, Gordonsville gets it done over at school I've never heard of, 4-2. to two. <laughs> As the pitch is in for a strike, 3-2, and two, we go full with Chris Worsing against Jack Everett. Has to be an out-of-state school against the nationally wrecked Gordonsville Tigerettes. Davies County, I think that's in Tennessee. Sure, 3-2. and two. Pitch comes in. This one swung on, sent foul. Kaylee Plumley is a uh, tremendous one of the best softball players we've ever seen. In the, the best Upper athletes Cumberland. we've seen. Yeah, she is on a different planet. Going to pitch at the University of Tennessee starting next year. Already got the logos on her helmet and everything. Yeah, she is a stud. Chris right. Worsing with a 3 2 count against Jack Everett here. Already one ring as well. Very likely he could get Probably another one this two. year. <laughs> Here comes the 3-2 payoff pitch. This one's sent out in the right field. If it stays fair, it's extra bases, and it is a fair ball. And that one gets back to the warning track. Rounding first, heading into second with a stand-up. South Willow Auto Clinic double is Chris Worsing. And the Bees offense looks fully in rhythm here in game number two. A runner at second with one out here for, Car for Juju Yano, the second baseman. Looking to add on. Really good piece of hitting. Obviously, he gets it to a full count. He's got to battle a little bit. Everett was starting to find his stride, but you said it. One of the best hitters on the team in terms of average and worsening. Able to send it down that right field line and get that stand-up double. It was a South Willow Auto Clinic double. The South Willow Auto Clinic are your hometown auto doctors. First pitch in to Yano. Misses upstairs and forever. is at pitch number 17 now. And Upperman has ambushed him. They are aggressive at the plate right now. Final score right behind us. The Lady Bees victorious over Clay County 8-0 to tonight. As that pitch bounces in now 2-0. and And we mentioned that difference in the depth of pitching. Sparta doesn't have many places they can go. They could go back to Pionki, which they did in game number one. But he's had a lot of time in between pitches. They don't have a lot of options right now. Seems like they might be able to go to Wilson. Yeah, we thought Wilson may get the start. And this one he does not. That pitch comes across for a strike with a fastball 2-1. and one. Wilson, we thought, wasn't here. He wasn't for a while. Now he is, so he's over there at first base. It was a late scratch in game number one. The 2-1, that one misses, and now a hitter's count to Juju Yano. 3-1, Carson Shoop on deck, and 
That's the nature of the beast with this lineup. It's just good hitter after good hitter all the way through, one through nine. The bees wanting to put a crooked letter up on the board. Here comes the 3-1. This one, did he go? Yes, it's three and two. Full count here again to Juju Yano. Wilson did throw 71 pitches on Friday. So he should can throw, be but he fine. would be a little bit tired for sure. It, limited work. 3-2. Coming home, bounces in, ball four, another walk. This time, Juju Yano will reach first walk of the game. Yano goes to first, Carson Shoup will stand in with a runner at first and second, and one out here, 22 pitches for Jack Everett. Now getting a little bit chilly up there. It's continuing to blow the wind in, blowing this bad weather into the state, 58 degrees. The wind chill makes it feel colder than that out there. Feels wonderful here in the press box. Yes, we are certainly appreciative of the fine folks here in Baxter. They feed you. It's nice and warm in the press box. Doesn't get it much better. 1-0. Runners at first and second here for Carson Shoup. Everett delivers, and he's struggling to find the zone a little bit. Two balls and no strikes, and Carson Shoup probably going to stand there until a strike comes across. He has not been able to really get ahead in any of these counts. He's been able to – he goes behind, and then he's been able to battle back a couple of times, but really struggling around the zone, and only came in with just the six walks in his couple of appearances so far. 2-1 bounces in, and it's red light special for – Carson Shoup, and guess what? A good hitter is on deck. Rookie Allison in the on-deck circle. Runners at first and second here with one out. It is tough as well, especially when you're playing back-to-back, -back and you're used to these district games Monday and then Tuesday, not back-to-back -back in a doubleheader situation. He's playing first base, and now is to come on and start this second game against a very prolific, prolific offense. You know, Lean on that experience you get in travel ball, just playing 17,000 games a day. Yeah. As the 3-0, that one misses inside ball four, and the bases are loaded for the pitcher, rookie Allison, who can really help his own cause. There's only one out here, second straight walk issued, and Coach Thompson going to come out and have a word with his pitcher. And Now you just got to battle. It's still within reach at 2-0, but that could change in a hurry with one swing, and you're going to get a courtesy runner out for the catcher. It's going to be Collier Bush. Rifled that helmet over. Yeah, he did. Goodness. Right into the gut. Well, for uh, for Coach Thompson, I mean, you're coming out here and you're saying the same thing that you just said. It's only 2-0 to zero right now. You throw a couple of good pitches, and they were in this situation there in that last game, in that first game, where it was 2-0. to zero. They had bases loaded and one out, and they were able to get out of it. Of course, got a little bit of help with the suicide squeeze that ended up not being bunted, so they got that easy out there and then uh, had some help outside of that. But uh, you need some things to go your way. And it didn't happen last week with the Stone Series, but we mentioned it in that one a lot of times last year. We saw game one yeah. be really tight with Upperman, and then game two would be over quickly. You don't want that to happen if you're Sparta. You know this is a pivotal moment here as rookie Allison stands in. Everett can go back in the full windup. First pitch right across for a strike. It's a big bounce back pitch after a couple of walks, 0-1. One, one. one of the very few times he's been able to start ahead in a count. One ground out, double play can get you out of the inning. Everett going to deliver in Allison the 0-1 pitch. That one swung on and missed, and he's quickly ahead 0-2. Big opportunity here for Jack Everett. Take a strikeout as well. He certainly would. Everett, long look in. Nods his head yes. Kicks and deals. That one bounces in, and it's going to be a run across for Upperman. He got way away from the catcher's seal. Everybody advances over. It's now 3 nothing Bs. As Worsing trots across to score. Yana moves over to third, and Bush goes to second. And Allison in a 1-2 count. Yeah, it just took a bad hop. I think it hit the glove and then the helmet and then kind of crammed off the left side over there where you saw Seal go towards and was able to give it enough space for the run to come home. 1-2 count here for rookie Allison. Everett delivers home. Missed upstairs trying to get that thing to fall off the table. Didn't quite do it, and it evens the count up. Still just one out in the top of the first inning. Upperman, the road team here in game number two. Wind gusting, you can see it across the pants of Everett. 2-2, two, two. this one, he went chasing at it. Upstairs, this could be tough though, in right field, Sievers trying to find it in the light, and he does, tagging up the runner heading for home, and he will score an RBI sack fly for rookie Allison. And as Collier Bush advances over 90 feet, and the lead now 4-0 to zero for Upperman. Oh, good piece of hitting there. Just hit it high enough and out to out to right field enough and so able to bring that run home. Good base running by Callier Bush as well, diving into third base. So you move both of the runners up, still two outs and still a chance to bring home more. Carson Holroyd trying to extend the inning. He's the eight-hole hitter batting in the first inning. 
That's always a good sign if you're the upper men beats. First pitch misses upstairs, 1-0. and It's a good sign if you're anybody. Eight around in the inning, Huddleston uh -huh. on deck, and then top of the order in the hole. Everett trying to battle through it, a 4 nothing game now. 1-0. Big swing and a miss on that one, 1-1. One and one. I think this is probably already the longest inning we've had so far. It is, 33 pitches ninth. for Jack Everett. Going to deliver home the 1-1. One, one. That one misses low and inside. Two balls, one strike. Everett's going to have to be careful. He's getting really close to balking out there with his first move. Kind of shuffles forward before getting into the windup. Here comes the 2-1. That one misses. Three balls, one strike. Evan Huddleston is swinging a great bat. He is on deck for Upperman. Holroyd trying to get on and extend the inning. Here comes the 3-1 pitch home. Everett delivers. Good pitch. Fastball catches the outside part of the zone, and we run full. Three and two with two outs. Runner at third. Everett with a long look in this time. Likes it, and now the payoff pitch. Called strike three, gets away from the catcher, has to be the throw down. It is there on line, and that will retire the side. But Upperman strikes. They bring four across on three hits, one runner left on, no errors in the field. We'll head to the bottom half. Sparta will look to answer. Coverage of this game is presented by Nick's Restaurant on the Frontier Chevy, UCR Media Network. <laughs> Welcome back. It's time for the Swallows Insurance starting lineups. First on the mound for the Upperman Bees is the junior right-hander, Rookie Allison. The side armor getting in his final warm-up pitches. He's going to face a Warriors lineup that trails 4-0, looking for an answer that will bat 1-9 through nine like this. Leading things off is the shortstop, Austin Pionki. Batting second is the catcher, Kaysen Seal. Batting third is the pitcher, Jack Everett. Batting fourth is the second baseman, Eli Smith. Batting fifth, the third baseman, Will Thomas. Batting sixth, the designated hitter, Cole Gentry. Batting seventh, the first baseman, Trenton Wilson. Batting eighth is the right fielder, Caden Siebers. And batting ninth is the center fielder, Sam Dykus. Not batting is the left fielder, Wyatt Diltz. And he's being batted for by Cole Gentry. Austin Pionki will settle in against, as I mentioned, different arm angle. You've got the sidearm action here from rookie Allison. He's making his first start of the season, third appearance. He's got a 3.5 earned run average, two innings pitched. He's allowed three runs, only one of them earned. Three strikeouts, no walks on three hits. And again, another pitcher who will be in the low 80s for the Bees. Upper 70s, low 80s, mixes up the pitches. The first one's across for a strike. 73. Shoop is behind the dish. We'll tell you about the defensive formation for Upperman in a moment. That next pitch misses. And it totally changes things when you got that sidearm action as yeah. it's coming up at you instead of down. But in the field, Upperman... Lines up like this. Carson Shoup now behind the dish catching the balls and strikes. Over at first base is Alec Wilson. Juju Yano at second as that pitch misses outside. Caden Shanks is at shortstop. And the third baseman once again is Chris Worsing. On in left field is Evan Huddleston. Carson Hole in right. And Manning center field is Justin Fallon. Yeah, how tough is that? You go from Shanks, a righty that throws almost 90. The 2-1. One. This one's chopped foul. Even as the count up at 2. Curtis, a lefty, who... Almost throws 90. And then you bring in the low, almost submarine-style pitcher that's still right around 75 or so. At least and starting off the game. Waiting in center field yeah. is Justin Another Fallon, 90. who throws 90. <laughs> <laughs> and he is fresh. Has not pitched yes. in about a week. 
as the 2-2 pitch. This one is swung on, sent right back towards rookie Allison at center. And the catcher shows off what he can do in the field as he delivers a throw over to first for the first out. Case and Seal will stride in. The catcher looking to get it rolling here as Upperman struck for four. They were able to leave one runner stranded over there at third base, but Upperman was jumping all over some good pitches. Yeah, and for White County being the home team on the scoreboard, you're going to have to answer back early on here because it's going to be tough to get back into a trailing 4-0, to zero, and you've got rookie Allison out there, but then you said it too. You can bring in Fallon. You can pretty much have everybody except for Worsing and Yano at your disposal. First pitch is across for a strike, and that's kind of where that sidearm action comes into play because it kind of works like a slider when it's going to that outside part of the zone where it goes across the zone. As the 0-1 pitch comes in, that one misses away, 1-1. One one. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button. Helps us out a whole lot here, whether you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Well over 1,000 subscribers and haven't been streaming there that long. That one waved at and missed. Allison keeping them off balance as it's 1-2. and two. DeKalb County, no hits yet against Carson Parrott, top of the seven. Carson Parrott trying to get a no-no. As the 1-2, this one is swung on and barreled out foul. What's the score of that game? Two to zero. Two to zero. Livingston. Carson on Parrott. First base. Trying to close out something impressive there. How was their runner at first? Oh, I guess he could have walked him. Hit him. Walked him. True. He's a little wild at times. One and two coming here from rookie Allison. This one flared out towards Caden Shanks. He doesn't read it well, and it gets past him, and that's going to be a base runner for White County, and I think that's going to go down as an error as it looked like he just couldn't pinpoint it when it came off the bat for Shanks. It was one of those probably that had a lot of spin on, on it as well, kind of off the end of the bat. They're going to go with an error. And not too many of them. The best stat keeper have. in the game, Jeff Goolsby. Petey, you know, they put up some I don't, what, banners, aren't the decals for the state championships, banners. the state runner-ups over to behind the dugout. And there is one name on all of those as this one's ripped out in the left field. Jack Everett helping his own cause and Sparta putting some pressure on here with runners at first and second. With one out, Everett waits for nothing, but there's only one name on all of those banners. I'm consistent. Jeff Goolsby, statistician. There's a Shanks, too, on all of them. A Shanks, Different but Shanks, not the same but yeah. Shanks. And now Eli Smith, dangerous hitter. He can make this one a lot more interesting quickly here as they want to turn this back into a seven-inning fight just like game one was. Absolutely. Wasn't able to get going in that first game as much. First pitch. Gets away from shoot, but not far enough for the runners to advance, and it's a called strike 0 and 1. We have a wider strike zone here in game number two but than we not, had in game number one. Not uh, not quite as wide as well, last that's, time we well, were Well, that's impossible to be that wide. I mean, 0 and 1. This one's sent out. That strike zone is, you see, you see the lines of the batter's box? That's the strike zone as it's 0 and 2 now. <laughs> not tonight, though. We got a normal strike zone tonight. Fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Runners at first and second with one out. 13 pitches for rookie Allison. Upperman leads 4-0. Breaking ball. Ooh. Swung on and missed. Strike three. A birdies lounge strikeout. First of the game for rookie Allison. And now there's two outs here in this half inning. That's a really good pitch. And you mentioned it. Kind of when you go to that sidearm, it's so tough to kind of read it, come out of the hand. That one just went right across the zone, and it got him to wave at it. Rumor has it, Stone Memorial is um, running it up right now, and their cross-county rival from... Goose, who is there as that pitch tips all the way from Shoop. He's going to throw down to third, and it's not in time. Right on top of it is Seal, and he will slide in on the pass ball. That's a couple of times now that it's tipped off the glove of Shoop, and he's not happy with that glove. He wants a different one. As it's 1-0, and N -O, the count. It's 25-1. to one. Stone Memorial leads Cumberland County in the top of the fourth inning, and I'm trying to figure out why they're playing a top of the fourth inning in a 25-1 to one game. No 15 run rule, technically. Technically. 25 to 1. I was under the impression after 15, you're up 15 after 3, the game ends, but not tonight. Well, we, had a, we, had a, we had a softball game in at 9 to 0 after 5. Maybe they'll stop it after the top of the 4th. We'll see. I mean, that's crazy. Stone Memorial was just opening they, it they up. They got two runners on. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, goodness gracious. One and two the count here. I probably mean one and oh the count with two outs. Rookie Allen's going to throw into Will Thomas. He had a great outing. It'll get lost in the grand scheme of the season because of the final result, but he was awesome in game number one. Cumberland County scored. It's now 25 to two. 
Runners at the corners here. This one swung on by Thomas, sent over towards Shanks. He fields it cleanly, loads up. It's got to be a good throw, and it is. Caden Shanks still got some juice left in that right arm as he delivers over, and that retires to the side. No runs on one hit. Two runners left on. We'll head to the second. It's Upperman four, Sparta zero. Coverage of this game is presented by Nick's Restaurant on the Frontier Chevy, UC Our Media Network. Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate just listed this new construction home located in the Brookstone subdivision. With 2,075 square feet, three bedrooms, and large walk-in closets, the main level primary bedroom has one of the best features ever. In addition to the hallway access, you could access the laundry room through the closet in the bedroom. The kitchen also features an island, a pantry, and stainless steel appliances. All cabinets throughout the house are soft clothes and have granite countertops. For more information, call Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate at 931-979-7145 or 931-526-9581. Always ask for Sonia Brown. Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Fire and Vine in Cookville is the Upper Cumberland's home for delicious Chicago-style pizza, beef, chicken, fish, and more. Located in Cookville's historic downtown district, Fire and Vine's food and atmosphere will keep you coming back for more. Take in stunning views with creative food and drinks on the rooftop. Fire and Vine is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Dixieland Delight is about the state of Tennessee, and we're back to action here in Baxter as it is 4-0 Bs and Dixieland Delight playing over the loudspeakers here. We're going to be, speaking of Alabama, on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Four games for the Bs, all live on the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. One on Thursday night at 7 o'clock, two on Friday, and another on Saturday. I will be there. Mads will be there, not on commentary, but working the scoreboard, so we'll have a locked-in scoreboard operator and producer, and we're going to have a lot of fun on the main UCR Facebook page and YouTube channel. We will have games here locally, of course, in the Upper Cumberland. We'll find out where when Jacob decides tomorrow or Wednesday, and we'll be sure to let you know. 912 Because tomorrow we probably won't have games. No. 912 do up for the Bees in this half inning. Evan Huddleston will get things started, and it was all Bees in that first inning. A little bit of pressure from White County offensively, but offensively the Bees, they were rolling. First pitch in to Huddleston is fouled back. Back to work is Jack Everett on the mound. Yeah, and for Everett, he's just trying to kind of settle in here early on. Gave up those four, four runs in the first and really struggled to find the strike zone in that first inning. And a guy that had been pretty good strike zone-wise, he had 10 strikeouts through his seven and two-thirds innings coming into the game tonight. 0-1 pitch, that one misses outside. Tip of the cap to Michael Lindsay Goose tonight. He's at that Stone Memorial Cumberland County game, and he's a better man than me because he hasn't gone home yet. I promise you I would have been at home by now. <laughs> he's sticking it out as the 1-1 pitch comes to Huddleston. It bounces, and it's 2-1. and one. That game started two hours I mean, ago. I would have been done with dinner by now. I, mean, it, it, I wouldn't have been close to that ballpark. This game might get done. 25-2. Livingston has beaten DeKalb County 2-1. to one. A 2-1 pitch. This one swung on and missed 2-2. Two and two. Was that a no-hitter for Carson Perry? Nope. Or did they gave a up hit? a double. They gave Blame it on me. Yep, there's your announcer, Jinx, that he swears doesn't exist. Here comes the 2-2 two -two pitch to Huddleston. Jack Everett trying to settle in here. Just record some outs. Get deeper into this ball game. And he gets one there as he goes up chasing. And that's a birdie's lounge strikeout. The second in a row for Jack Everett on the mound. Caden Shanks, he opened us up with a triple to dead center field. And he will trot in here for AB number two. Well, sometimes for a pitcher, that's all you need. And sometimes it's going to take a pitch that you may not like very much. You need some help from the batter. So he gets it there from Huddleston. But now you got to face the top of the lineup here for the Bees. Yeah, uh, the equation changes when this young man strides into the batter's box. And he does here with the bases empty and one out in the top of the second. First pitch for Everett. He swings at this one. And you can tell what he's trying to do with these swings right now, and that is park it over the berm. There's three rows of bleachers out there on top of the berm in right field, and he wants to clear that with a swing like that. That would be in this wind a lot. Yeah, you would have to hammer it. Here comes the 0-1 pitch home. Breaking ball, and he turns on this one into center field. It's drifting left, still going back. It is way back, and again into the fence. And again, Shanks rounds third, and he is going to be in with a stand-up triple. Two innings, two triples for the Lipscomb signee. Just adding on to his career record holder of those triples for Caden Shanks. He's got so much speed. Again, 
He was the pitcher in the first game, and now he's got two triples here in the second game. You mentioned game. the speed. It's never a question. When a ball gets to the yep. fence, it's a triple. Yep. It's a double for most kids, not for Caden Shanks. And Al Fallon stands in again. He already batted him in once with an RBI single. He stands in here, Everett, going back to work. Breaking ball. It's a good one across for strike one. Good pitch by Jack Everett. And Shanks trying to catch his breath over there at third base. I think Fallon uh, maybe help, helping him out a little bit. Not swinging at that one. <laughs> here comes the 0-1. He has the hardest hit ball we've seen all year. Yeah, uh, I think it was on the middle still, school still roof. Might be going. Yeah, it's on the middle school roof that he hit last week against Stone. One of the Memorial. classrooms. We finally, uh, Jimmy tracked it on the on camera by putting it on the TV as the 0-2 pitch from Everett comes into foul and it bounces. Good block by Seal. It was three quarters of the way up the light pole when it went out. I was going to say, we field. couldn't see it when we were looking for so it. So that's 345 to the fence, and think about probably 50 feet in the air over that. That light pole is waving, too. <laughs> Wow, that is disturbing <laughs> as the one-two pitch is about to come home. Swung on and missed. Good pitch by Jack Everett for a birdie's lounge punch out. His third of the outing, second of this inning, and he's threatening to put a zero on the scoreboard. Alec Wilson has an RBI. He strides in here. Yeah, you mentioned for Everett, he just needed to settle in and get himself a couple of outs, and he got it against Tuttleston. That was a really good A-B there against Fallon to get the strikeout. Well, now I can't stop looking at the light Oh, pole, it's rocking. Which is Rocking and it's rolling. It's probably been doing it all night, yeah, too. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Just can't unsee it now as the first pitch misses in. And again, Seal able to keep it in front. 1-0. Now we can't see because we've been looking at a yeah, light pole. Well, can't see anyway. It's part of the problem. That's a good point. <laughs> 1-0 coming to Alec Wilson. That one misses low with the fastball. 2-0 right behind Wilson is Chris Worsing, who has a double today. And you wouldn't know the Bees struggled a little bit offensively about an hour ago because right now they are in rhythm. That was a credit to Thomas on the mound as well. Absolutely. Here comes the 2-0 pitch. That one misses low. Thomas was really able to pound the zone in different yeah. spots, yeah. move it inside and out. Right now, Everett, he's been more in it after settling a little bit, but it, the 3-0 counts have hurt him just a little bit. Yeah, Thomas had his command. Here comes the 3-0. That one misses inside ball four. And Alec Wilson reaches first base. Runners at the corners now with two outs for Chris Worsing. He already has a double today, extending his average. He entered the game at 385. He is rapidly approaching 400 on the young campaign. Uh, he's just been mis Mr. Consistent at the plate so far this season, and it's been kind of from game number one. He's come in, and he has hit the baseball, and he has continued his success here in his freshman season. Runners at the corners here. Jack Everett out of the stretch. First pitch swinging for Worsing as he sends it foul, and that was on a rope over right side. 0-1. You would not know if you just turned it on that this kid's a freshman. He doesn't no. look like one. He doesn't play like one. And he's been able to go all over the place in the field. The 0-1 pitch, I think they really like him at third base as that one misses away one and one. But he's gone out in the right field, left field. He's pitched really well. He leads the team or second on the team and wins behind Caden Shanks at 2-0. 1-1, and one, one, that one misses in again. Seal slides over to block it, 2-1. and one. Shanks at 3-0, and Worsing at 2-0. and Of course, when Kilpatrick comes back into the swing of things, you can kind of have your free reign defensively of where you want everybody, yeah, too. Yeah, has been good in right field. Kilpatrick played some of that as well. 2-1. That one just misses 3-1. and one. And Kilpatrick and Worsing, kind of similar in that they can play outfield, they can play third, they can pitch. And Kilpatrick was hitting the ball really well to start the year, too, Carson before he got Shute hurt. is one of those players. Is the 3-1. Misses ball four, and the bases are loaded for Juju Yano with two outs here. And this is a big moment in the ballgame. Sparta wants to keep this interesting. If they're able to get out of the danger here, you certainly still have a pulse. A big swing by Yano, and it could be close to over early on. It seems like he's had a few of those throughout his career when he's got bases loaded. This one just in the second inning, but you said it. You try to put a few more runs on the board, and then you start creeping into maybe that 10-run territory. First pitch misses upstairs, and right now Everett trying to find the zone, but he's thrown 58 pitches through just one and two-thirds innings. It's been a struggle. Everett for the White County Warriors, the 1-0. That one bounces in again, seal with the block. It's 2-0, and Coach Thompson, he's really needing to find some strikes there, or else he's going to have to make a move on fatigue, if nothing else. Here comes the 2-0. That one, good pitch. Across for a strike, two and one. You're sitting there, you're like, man, one out. You're okay. Mm -hmm. Big, you can actually get a bunch of momentum back, leaving the bases loaded. But if 
They don't get the out. It could get lopsided. Here comes the 2-1. That one swung on, and now he's back in it at 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, a good battle back here by Everett. Two and two. You've evened it up. You still have that little wiggle room with another ball able to go across. So get a good spot here. Yano, though, going to try to put a good swing on it. Base is loaded. Two outs. Two and two. Count to Juju Yano. He's walked once and scored a run. Pitch in. That one misses away. And now here we go. High leverage situation. Three, two count. The runners will take off on motion. Carson Shoup is on deck. Another good hitter. And a big pitch here from Jack Everett, the 63rd here in the second inning. And there was the balk. Runners take off. 3-2 pitch. Swung on, flared out towards right field. Long way to go in right. Angling towards foul ground. It drops in foul. And Jack Everett got away yeah, with did. one, a he major does, one. He's, he's got a little, he rocks back and forth a little bit before he tries to come to set, and that's what Alec Wilson is actually telling the home plate umpire right now because he kind of rocks and then he goes into his motion. you got to come set for a full second before you go into your motion. And my apologies, I wasn't trying to put words in the umpire's mouth. I was just positive there about to go a balk there. Bases are loaded here with a 3-2 count and two outs. Runners take off now. He delivers home. Misses down low, and that's an RBI walk for Juju Yano. And the lead swells to 5-0, and the situation remains the same for Carson Shoup. Caden Shanks comes across to score. Wilson goes to third. Wor Worsen goes to second. Yano goes to first. Carson Shoup has walked once, and he will stride in here. And now Everett, 63 pitches. Upperman won earlier 2-0. Now up 5-0. First pitch in. That's a good one. Across for strike one. And Shoup going to take the whole way there after the walk. Yeah. Yeah, you trying to get that pitch count up there already up to 64. They've made him work, that's for sure. Here comes the 0-1 home to Shoup. Went chasing at that one, and now Everett a strike away from leaving the bases loaded. And all things considered, only one across in the frame. You can live with that. 0-2. Shoup trying to battle. Everett doing the same. Long look in from Jack Everett. Now, deals home. Shoop swings at this one, sends it foul out of play. And we will do it again. That one drops in to the side, walked in on top of the field house. It is 26 to 2. Stone Memorial over Cumberland County in the top of the fifth. And I still have no clue why they're still playing baseball in Crossville right now. Someone can explain it to me like I'm five. Bases loaded with a 2 2 count with two outs. Pitch in, shoot, just That's flicks the bat at yeah. it and stays alive. That one was probably good. It could have at least a chance to be called for a strike on that outside part of the plate, able to get the barrel to it just to stay alive. He didn't like that one, so stay alive for another pitch. It literally just kind of flicked the hands at it and was able to poke it foul. Here comes the 0-2. Again to shoot. That one misses inside. One and two. If you're ever you're thinking, please give me that call, but it did miss. Yeah, good battle so far. Shoop trying to keep this going. Everett delivers the one, two. Breaking ball. Seal gets enough of it to hold Wilson over there at third. And the count evens up at two. This next pitch will be number 70 in the second inning for Jack Everett. And Seal, he's been kept busy back there. So that one was actually 70. It looks yeah, this like. will be pitch number 71. Everett, the 2-2. Two, two. Kicks and deals. That one misses, and now we run full now. And I got a sneaking suspicion this may be the last batter he's going to face today if he does not get out of this jam. The runner's going to be going again. Shoop settles in from 0-2. It's 3-2. Everett delivers home. Swung on this one. Rolled through, and it's going to be through for a base hit. One run scores with ease. Two come across with ease. A third going to head home. Here comes the throw in. No. And it is a three RBI single for Carson Shoop. He clears the bases, and the onslaught is on for the Bees. They're out in front eight to zero. Yeah, not too many times you're going to see a bases clearing single on a three two count, but it's because of that three two count when the runners are going. You've already got Yano pretty much standing on second base when that, when that pitch gets home. So he only has to make it two bags and is able to do so. Really good uh, at bat there. Again, he gets behind in the count of one and two, and then able to get a, to full. It gets a pitch over the middle that he's able to handle and puts it through the outfield, and we will have a change. Carson Shoop is up to nine RBI 
otherwise on the season. That leads the team. And it is time for Hall Sports and Outdoors. Call to the bullpen for White County. Upper men in the middle of a big start. They lead 8-0. to zero. New pitcher when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Clint Connor is your local auctions expert. With full service from start to finish, the Exit Crossroads Auction Group are here to make the process easy for you. Visit CrossroadsAuctionGroup.com for more details and current auctions. Clint Connor, your local auctions expert, is proud to sponsor this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. The Crouch Team with Highlands Lay Real Estate proudly presents this gorgeous home on Cross Point Drive. Boasting four bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms with nearly 2,000 square feet, this home in the Prescott School District in Cookville could be your forever home. Call 931-979-1191 for more information and to schedule a showing or visit chatandamycrouch.com. The Crouch Team with Highlands Elite Real Estate is proud to sponsor this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Delicious Pan Pizza is Domino's best kept secret. With locations in Smithville, Sparta, Livingston, Allgood, and two in Cookville, Delicious Pan and Hand Toss Pizza, Pasta, and more is never far away. Use the Domino's app to take care of your game day eats today. Domino's is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. A Hall Sports and Outdoors call to the bullpen for the White County Warriors as they are looking for a change. They trail 8-0 to zero here against the Epperman Bees after a bases-clearing single out of Carson Shoup. And it's going to be moving out of left field to the mound. Number two, Wyatt Dilt. He's made two appearances so far this year, Jacob. Three appearances, two innings pitched so far. He's got an 0-1-1 record as he actually got a loss against Cannon County. Since then, he's only appeared for an out against Cookville and Sequatchie. He's got an ERA of 10.50 coming into this appearance, but a batting average against of just 200. He's got two strikeouts to three walks. He has allowed three earned runs in his two innings so far this season. And he's facing an upperman offense that is rolling on all cylinders right now. Carson Shoup, that was a really good A.B. Back to clear the bases with, as you mentioned, rare that you get a bases clearing single, but they were moving on that full count with two outs and allowed everybody to come across the score. And you said it. He was probably coming out if he's not able to get that out. And how big was that at bat by Shoup? Because because instead of it being 4-0 to zero heading to the second, it's now 8-0 to zero and still a chance to maybe tack on a few runs with a new pitcher coming in here for White County. But if you're Dilts, you're coming into this game, you're trying to get it to the third, keep it at 8-0 to zero right now, keep it at bay and see if, see if your offense maybe can't get, get it going a little bit against Ricky Allison, who, again, is going to be waiting for quite some time here in this inning. And this is the second straight inning where at least eight batters will come across to the plate here for Upperman. We're going to do On This Day in Baseball History with Jacob Vincent. Now's a good time for it. Let's go back to 1985. An Illinois judge ruled that the banning of night games at Wrigley Field is constitutional, so it was kind of up in the air, and they said, yes, that's right. We do not want night games at Wrigley Field in 1985. They would not play their first night game at Wrigley Field until three years later, August 9th of 1988. Do you know when the first game in MLB history, a night game in MLB history was? 1968. 35. Wow. At Crosley Field, the Cincinnati Reds beat the New York Mets 2-1. I should have guessed it was some Reds thing. I should have waited until Jimmy was not talking to say that a little bit louder. <laughs> Ricky Allison going to Oh, the big part, it was the Phillies, not the Mets. Yeah, not the Mets. Uh, it's a sad, sad, sad franchise. Runner at first year is the courtesy runner for Carson Shoot Collier Bush. And Ricky Allison is at the plate. There are two outs here in the bottom or the top of the second inning, rather. Upperman, the road team here in game number two, and that is a generous strike call in the outside corner for Wyatt Diltz. Derek Allen nearly got it. He said 1989. He said 88, close enough. Runner takes off the 0-1, misses inside the throw, down, not in time, and it's a domino stolen base for Collier Bush. He's been a... Really doing a good job on the base path. Obviously, we saw that back in the first game. He was able to take third base, tagging up on a fly ball out to right field, I think, when it was rookie at the plate as well. And rookie Allison had an RBI sack fly back in the first inning. Now he's trying to add on and help his own cause a little bit. The 1-1 misses outside, 2-1. and one, And it is really starting to get windy out yeah, there. It you can see the dirt actually kicking up in the infield, all the uniforms. You can see the umpires. Players are trying uniform. to hold their hats. I mean, this is... It's, what we're playing it's brutal out there. It is. Yeah, light poles waving. There's been a lot of hard hit baseballs for the bees that have kind of neutralized that as the two one. That one misses inside, dusts him off the plate, and Allison goes ahead three and one. Carson Holroyd on deck as the bees threatening to bat around in this half inning. So there have been a couple of moments this year where you could 
grow some concern about the Upperman offense, the Friendship Christian game. Of course, you have those games against those powerhouses in Georgia. This one misses for ball four. But there's been several appearances last week against Stone in the second game, even in the first game in a few of those innings. This one tonight where you go, oh, yeah, they're still very, very dangerous. Well, even in the first two games of the season, I mean, against Smyrna and then yep. uh, in the in a one against Rockville as well, they scored a lot of runs. And uh, I think it was 22 in those first two games of the season. And a lot of times you'll hear from coaches, well, sometimes it takes the bats a little bit to get going. Well, they got going in those two games, settled off a little bit, took on some really good competition, but now they're starting to kick it back into high gear again. Braden Green out to run for the pitcher, Allison. The first pitch is across for a strike here to Carson Holroyd, who struck out looking back to end the first inning looking to extend the second here in an 8 nothing ball game and yeah to your point Caden Shanks and Justin Fowle now started to tick up those averages they actually started slow even in those big wins so offense starting to round into a little bit more form here for the Bees they're going to get tested later on this week 0-1 this one's fouled straight back 0-2 Wyatt Diltz has come in and he's throwing a lot more strikes he's getting in there he gave up the walk, but you can he's mixing them up a little bit better. It was Everett who threw over 70 pitches in an inning and two-thirds. Well, and you feel like for the Bees now as well, you're up 8-0. to zero. You're probably going to be pretty aggressive trying to get that at least that 10th run on the board because you trust your defense to not allow any runs to come across. Stone Memorial has finally beaten Cumberland County 26-2. The 0-2, close, but no cigar. Misses outside, 1-2. and two. Yeah, that game could have been called after three, but they played through five and a dominant win for the Panthers. A two-hour and 15-minute five-inning game, by the wow. way. Well, 28 combined runs, that'll do it. As Holroyd swings at this one, sends it way up in the air. This is going to be a tough play with all the wind, but under it, and that is a nice play made out and left to retire this side, but not before more damage is done. The Bees bring four more across to take an 8 nothing lead. We'll head to the bottom half when we come back. Coverage of this game is presented by Nick's Restaurant on the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing is proud to support student athletes and athletic departments throughout the Upper Cumberland. They're also proud to sponsor the Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing Player of the Game on this broadcast. From trophies to t-shirts, they can do it all. Stop by and see them at 120 Circle Drive in All Good or give them a call at 931-537-9559. Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing is proud to sponsor this broadcast on UCR Media Network. Frontier Chevrolet is ready to get you into your next vehicle and are proud to offer a lifetime powertrain warranty on nearly all vehicles below 80,000 miles. View inventory online at www.caseychevy.com, including the brand new Chevy Trax and Traverse, or stop in at 2350 Cookville Highway today. Remember, don't buy till you see Jason Fye. Rookie Allison back to work here on what is turning into a brisk, windy night in the Upper Cumberland here in Baxter, Tennessee. Upper men's lead is 8-0, to zero and they're firing on all cylinders right now, Jacob. Yeah, and it started from the first inning, and it was from the get-go as well. You saw Kane Shanks at two triples already in this game through two innings of play. Justin Fallon has cranked one, not cranked one, but he's hit one pretty hard out there. We've seen some really big hits already in this game. And then in the second inning, wasn't so much the hits. It was more so just kind of moving those batters around. There were more walks in there. And for rookie Allison, you're just trying to get some good pitches out there. You probably might see Fallon come in a little bit later. You could see Alec Wilson come in a little bit later as well. Uh, but for the Bees, they're also trying to get ready for the rest of this week. They're playing and some really good competition down in Alabama starting on Thursday. They're going to get that extra day of rest uh, coming up tomorrow now that they are playing this game tonight and uh, obviously going to try to get out of here with a win. I'll tell you what the mindset is right now for Upperman. It's a seven spot in the top of the third inning. That's what they're thinking about, trying to get out of here. As Sparta wants to stand in the way of that 6-7-8 due up for the Warriors. As we know, 15 runs don't matter. Well, in the it third. does. I don't know what happened in Crossville tonight, but it definitely does. As Gentry steps in, the designated hitter, and it is the wind has – it's been windy all day. It has significantly picked up yeah. in the past few minutes here. Really getting gusty as the first pitch in from the side armor. And this is a check swing. I think he went the appeal down. Did he? He, and he did. That's strike one. And Gentry disagrees, but it looked pretty clear that – remember, it's did he offer at it? Correct. It's the very – Judgment call based that we, for some reason, have to have in baseball and not in any other sport. Here comes the 0-1. That one swung on and missed. He went at that one. Too. Also, can we get the balls and strikes challenge that they've tried out in minor league baseball at the major league level? Mm. It's quick, right? You get yeah. it, you just uh, you gotta just tap your helmet. Yeah. They check down and it's yes or no, and that way we can stop Angel Hernandez from his attacks on America. As that pitch misses outside one and two, there's no reason. 
we have we know what a strike zone is. Just Angel Hernandez it. doesn't. Just he does not. And while we're at this. it, in the major league level, robot umps. I said what I said. I said what I said. There's not one convincing argument against it. As the 0-2, this one swung on and ripped over towards Shanks, and it eats him up. Going to be another error as this one allows Gentry to reach first base to lead off the second inning, and Trenton Wilson going to stride in for his first A-B of the day. That's just, what, the third base runner allowed? Both two of them errors? Yeah, and Caden Shanks is not happy with himself yeah. over there. They did have a single back in the first inning. So that one was hit pretty well, but yeah, he yeah. said he's and just hadn't been able to get that right on the right bounce. And he's a tremendous baseball player. Remember Correct. He pitched great game. A great game back in game number one. First pitch across from Allison just misses for a ball one and zero. Oh. And now he's going to play in one of the toughest positions in the infield over right. there at shortstop. Check over towards first. Runner takes his lead. Allison delivers home. That one waved at and missed. You could tell just off balance with uh -huh. this different arm slot. Yeah, because it comes in, so you almost have to step out just to make sure you kind of get your hands through and just not able to get there in time. Well, everything when it comes, especially pitches that are coming inside, even strikes, is the 1-1, one, one, that one's across for a strike. It looks like it's going to hit you because mm -hmm. it starts really behind you as it's yeah. coming across from that sidearm position. So if you're not just, you're going to stand in there with a lot of confidence as Allison throws over back in plenty of time is the runner Gentry. Sparta trying to get a couple of them back here and turn this into a fight. It's 8 nothing right now as that pitch is across, misses low. 2-2. Two and two. Good crowd here. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously the only two times that these two teams will play, at least until the district tournament. The 2-2, two, two. this one swung on, weakly rolled towards Allison. He fields it, has to make a good throw, and he does. Now Wilson throws behind the runner again. Just back in time, that will record the out as Gentry advances over into scoring position. It'll bring up Caden Sievers. I think some people made their way over here from the softball game. Uh -huh. So Lady B's victorious over Clay County, 8-0. to zero. I'm telling you, put a window in here. We'll make some magic happen. Oh. And standing in here is Sievers. Allison delivers in. That one waved at and missed, 0-1. And if you're Sparta, the thing you don't like is what's due up in the bottom half. Once again, it's 9-1-2. Same situation we just saw. We get some score updates here after this pitch from rookie Allison. It's swung on and fouled back. Monterey is beating Pickett County 6-0. Baseball? Baseball. There you go. 0-2, the count here. Seavers trying to battle. Nine-hole hitter Sam Dykus is on deck. Runner at second here with one out. Allison delivers that one, gets away from Shoop, and the pass ball is going to allow Gentry to move over 90 feet away. We've seen that a few times tonight. One and two now with one out. Really, the only thing that's slowed Upperman down, a couple of errors and a couple of pass balls. Yeah, and, and that's uh, they've played a couple of really nice games, and that was kind of what I was saying with White County in that first game. That's why they kept it so close, is defensively they were really good. Upperman has been... Maybe not a lax, but just uh, just hasn't been quite as sharp here in this second game. A couple of errors in the field, a couple of balls there. This one's chopped down the third baseline, and it's going to go foul, so we'll do it again, one and two. Yeah, two errors already, a couple of pass balls, as we mentioned, so I want to tighten it up, but it's easier said than done, especially when you're up eight to zero. Sparta wants to capitalize on it and put some pressure on him here. One, two, coming home, breaking ball, swung on and missed. Maybe foul tipped either way. It's a birdies lounge strikeout. For the second out of the inning, and it's the second punch out of the game for rookie Allison. <laughs> That's got to be such a, such a tough pitch to handle. It's kind of that looping yeah. curve ball, just very slow in there, and you kind of have to sit back on it, and it's moving at a weird angle. First pitch, waved at and missed, and all of a sudden, rookie Allison appears to have built some confidence. He's 31 pitches in, and he's ahead 0-1. Yeah, that was at 71. 0-1, oh, that one swung on. That's 0-2. We've got one more trivia question. I think we're going to get to it in the third inning. And apparently this was the hard one, so can't wait to see what that is. <laughs> As Allison delivers on the 0-2. This one swung on, fouled back. A battle swing there for Dykus. Can't make them too easy. They, n they are literally never easy. 
because it's always multiple choice, and like the top four answers you can have are always the yeah, choices. At least they're multiple choice. There's no throwaway answer. Even the, even the hardest tests have a throwaway answer. As the 0-2 pitch comes home, that one cold strike three. Back to back birdies lounge strikeouts for rookie Allison retires the side and leaves a runner 90 feet away. No runs on no hits, one error and one left on. As we head to the third, it's Upperman eight. Sparta Zero Trivia. When we come back, coverage of this game presented by Nick's Restaurant on the Frontier Chevy, UCR Media Network. I'm looking for someone who can keep me comfortable, stay here for the long run, and definitely not high maintenance. Not right. Absolutely not. This one looks perfect. Find your perfect match with Hiller. Get a free UV light with select new HVAC systems, 50% off a descaler with new tankless water heaters, or free surge protection with a new whole home generator. like that one too. Steel Technologies has been part of the Rutherford County community for over 35 years. Their plants in Murfreesboro and Smyrna include over 150 teammates who process coils, metal sheets, and blanks for customers across North America. Steel Tech Smyrna and Murfreesboro plants are expanding, and they need teammates to join their team. With openings including machine and forklift operators, truck drivers, and more, they have the position for you with competitive wages and monthly bonus opportunities. For more information and to apply online, scan the QR code on your screen now. Steel Tech is a proud sponsor of this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Steel Tech. Faith, family, steel tech. Welcome back. It's time for trivia presented by Wilson Farms. Quality Angus beef for sale at Wilson Farms. Jacob Vincent, what's your hard question tonight? Who was the youngest player to win an MVP in Major League Baseball, either league, AL or NL? Bryce Harper. Vita Blue, I know this. Johnny Bench, or Stan Musial. I say that, I'm going to be very wrong, but I think I know this. Once again, who is the youngest player to win an MVP in the MLB? Bryce Harper, Vita Blue, Johnny Bench, or Stan Musial? Yeah, but you said this was hard, so I don't know it. Unless you psyched me out. Was, I thought it was hard. My first guess was wrong. If it's hard, then I'm going to be wrong. Because I got the low-hanging fruit. <laughs> Standing in is Evan Huddleston. 9-1-2 <laughs> to open this heaven for the Bees. They lead 8-0 to zero here over White County. Delts back to work here. First pitch misses low and outside. He did a good job of kind of stabilizing things when he got into mm -hmm. the game. It was starting to roll off the rails for White County. Came out of left field and still not throwing, you know, into the upper 80 or upper 70s, but mixing up the spots a little bit. 1-0 pitch coming here to Evan Huddleston, who struck out swinging. Now this time he chops it over towards the first baseman, Everett, who fields it and will go and tag the bag for the first out. And here comes that man, Caden Shanks. Two for two with two triples and two runs scored. Here for attempt number three, going for the three-peat maybe. I mean, I've never seen Trophy and screen printing player of the game already. Like, obviously, we're not going to do that, but uh, <laughs> he gets another triple. It's, it's gonna be I over. mean, it's, it's over. If he gets another triple, it's over. <laughs> He's got it. That would almost that would be more impressive than him hitting a home run right here. Would be if he hits another. Triple. It'd be more impressive than a cycle, I think. That I th three I agree. of them. Yeah, that's crazy. First pitch swing. He was Jacob about it. Is that one's fouled out of play? <laughs> zero and one. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to call it like it's the freaking World Series if he hits another <laughs> triple here. I got news for you because that would be crazy impressive. It's now the 0-1 pitch coming home. Shanks awaits. That pitch across the inside corner as we talked about earlier. He passed it the record for Upperman triples in school history as a junior. Yeah. He's already got a bunch this year. He's already got a bunch in this game. <laughs> He's behind 0-2, though, as Dilts tries to get a big out. Kicks and deals that one. <laughs> Nearly got him and spins away. One and two. By the way, UppermanBaseball.com. We mentioned PD earlier. He keeps that thing updated. It's an unbelievable Tremendous. site for all those different things. There's, there's a one and two pitch coming here to Shanks. That one bounces in, and from one and two, it's two and two. And that's one of the things about this Upperman lineup the past few years. A lot of teams, when you get behind 0 and 2, you see a lot of weak swings. You see people chasing things. They're typically very patient, even Battling. with 0 and 2 counts. Well, that's a credit to Coach Shanks and kind of what he's built here over the last handful of years. The 2 2 pitch coming home. That one bounces in, and now it's 3 and 2. And Smith County leads Jackson County in game number two of a doubleheader. They are 12 to 0 in the first. So we're seeing teams separate in yeah. game two of doubleheaders tonight. Yeah, Smith County and Watertown kind of separating themselves in that district. 
Here comes the 3-2 payoff pitch. This one swung on and in foul territory, angling. It's staying in play. Third baseman can't quite make the catch as it tipped off the glove. And there's no errors in foul territory, but that could have been one as Shanks is going to stand in. It was tough. He's kind of hanging on the wall right there as well. So he's trying to find the wall where the bench dugout is. And, and well, As a former corner infielder, I have little sympathy. That's I think that's that's a me problem, though. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a, a long play. way to go, too. It is a tough play. Yeah, in most parks, that's well out of play. Yeah. 3-2 payoff pitch again, misses ball four, and Kane Shanks goes from 0-2 to a walk, and that's less impressive than a triple, but he's still on first base, and Justin Fallon will stride it. He's one for two with an RBI. Hey, it's still a pretty good A-B putting to, put together when you're behind and able to work it all the way back and earn yourself a walk, and now a runner on for Justin Fallon, who's been swinging it well. Well, he is. Kane Shanks has reached three times in three innings. That tells you it's about okay. how this game has gone so right. far. It's 8 nothing Upperman, Fallon with one out here. Shanks immediately takes off. Throw going to come down. Not in time. It's a domino stolen base for Caden Shanks. Thought about going to third after it leaked away, but he retreats back. And now runner in scoring position is Caden Shanks now on the season. It's four for four. He almost took third as the throw came back to the mound and actually got away back to seal again. <laughs> he's always looking to take off. <laughs> With the speed that he's got, why not? I would, too. And now Fallon puts anything into the outfield. It's going to be a run score, and he has a gigantic lead over there at second. He may be thinking about going another bag. He takes another step. He's going to stay put for now as the pitch misses low and outside by a hair, one and one to Justin Fallon. Yeah, I mean, he's just playing with him right there. Just trying to get in the head of the pitcher a little bit. Make sure he knows he's back there bouncing around. And then, of course, you got to focus on Fallon at the plate and a uh, pretty good gamesmanship move. Yeah, he's got another huge lead. Is the 1-1 pitch to Fallon, and he turns on that one. You can kiss it. Goodbye. Goodbye, baseball. A two-run jack to left field by Justin Fallon, and it's a double-digit lead for Upperman. It, that might be further in the first one he hit. I mean, that ball <laughs> was, was hammered. <laughs> that was a nuclear strike. From Justin Fallon. Not only that, it caught the slipstream and just took <laughs> off to the parking lot. I mean, he's he's hit two. We're not even kidding. Two bombs of 400 plus already oh, this easily. season. That's easily. easily 400 plus. That was a double dribbled on his dunk attempt. That though. was a crushed shot, and it's 10 nothing Upperman. And Alec Wilson will stand in here with the bases empty and one out. My goodness, you'll be seeing that one later on Twitter. Whew. Second home run of the season for Justin Fallon. That's one of the hardest hit baseballs I've ever seen. Yep. That was unbelievable. And we saw the one he hit already this year. <laughs> that, that was, there's no doubters, and then there's that ball right there as Wilson goes ahead and to count 1-0. and oh. Next pitch in. This one's waved at and missed. 1-1. One and one. He's trying to join he was, the parade yeah, I was with gonna that say, one. He was trying to answer him. <laughs> Chris Worsing is on deck. And just trying to battle in there is why it dilt. And next pitch in, that one misses. Or part of me catches. <laughs> it did miss, but he got the call one and two. I, I promise I wasn't trying to be a smart aleck on that one. I just went to autopilot. That pitch misses low for Wilson, and the count evens up at two. I mean, yeah, what about the power we've seen from Fallon already this year? It took him a little bit to get going, but it, it, it seems like every time they come back to Baxter, of course it was the first game against Stone Memorial in that second one. This has just been their second and third games here in Baxter so far this season. They hit so well in this park. That pitch. This is low and outside, and now once again, 0-2 to 3-2. You see the battling through of these hitters for Upperman. Ten runs on six hits. So far they're capitalizing on walks as well. And here comes the 3-2 payoff pitch for Diltz. That one, good pitch, called strike three with a birdies line strikeout, just clipped the inside corner. And that's a big second out there, Chris Worsing. He's so far one for one. He has scored two runs, has a double and a walk. We're not ready for the answer to the trivia question yet, are we? Uh, we will get to it at the end of this I inning. Got, I, had to, I honestly had to think about it for a second. 
not yet. Is worsening. Bottom of the third. Oh, wait. We'll get to it when we come back at yes. the bottom of the third. Yes. Good point. First pitch swing here. He chops it over. Third baseman is there. Going to make a good throw. Loads up, and a good throw is across for out number three. But Justin Fallon has one to put on every social media channel he's got. He crushes a two-run bomb to left field, and the Bees have broken it open. It's 10-0. Coming to this game presented by Nick's Restaurant on the Frontier Chevy, UCR Media Network. Steel Technologies has been part of the Rutherford County community for over 35 years. Their plants in Murfreesboro and Smyrna include over 150 teammates who process coils, metal sheets, and blanks for customers across North America. Steel Tech's Smyrna and Murfreesboro plants are expanding, and they need teammates to join their team. With openings including machine and forklift operators, truck drivers, and more, they have the position for you with competitive wages and monthly bonus opportunities. For more information and to apply online, scan the QR code on your screen now. Steel Tech is a proud sponsor of this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Steel Tech. Faith. Family. Steel Tech. From the sports field to the hunting field, our friends at Hall Sports and Outdoors can outfit anyone. Located in the heart of Jamestown at 207 South Main Street, Hall Sports and Outdoors carries everything from kayaks, fishing gear, and camo to guns and ammo. With top brands such as Columbia, Timberland, Under Armour, Asics, and much more, nobody can top their selection. Need some custom gear for your team? They also offer uniforms, gear, and custom embroidery. Stop by and see them at 207 South Main Street in Jamestown. Hall Sports and Outdoors, proud sponsor of this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Welcome back. Back to work goes rookie Allison on the mound as the Bees lead 10-0 to here over Sparta. At this point, we will remind you what the run rule is. It is if you lead by 10 runs after five innings, the game ends. If you lead by 15 after three, it's supposed to end unless you're in Cumberland County tonight. <laughs> well, but regardless, Upperman. Of course, that's a little uh, crosstown rivalry. Now, uh, so. Yeah, true. Now Sparta looking for an answer to try and avoid that run rule potentially looming in a couple of innings. And due up first in this half inning is the top of the order. One, two, three for the Warriors against Rookie Allison. has been pretty good here in his first start of the campaign, Jacob. Yeah, and they're starting to get a little separation in the seven AAA standings right now as well. Upperman and Livingston at 3-0. and Three teams at 1-2 and in Sparta, DeKalb, and Stone. And then Cumberland County at 0-3. But to your point on Rookie Allison, he really found a groove there in the second, trying to continue that in the third. As this one's ripped right back to him. He flashes the leather and jogs it over to... Alec Wilson, one pitch, one out here as Pionki goes down. It'll bring up Kaysen Seal. He reached an error and was ultimately left stranded 90 feet away back in the first inning. It's always a pretty good start to the inning. Just ground out right back to yourself. Do we know if Livingston to cab, that's going to be a single header? They're supposed to play again tomorrow. I don't think they changed it, it to a double header. As the first pitch misses outside for a ball here from rookie Allison to Kaysen Seal. By the way, Smith County is leading Jackson County 16 to one in the bottom, or 16 to zero in the bottom of the first. You're seeing in some of these games that pitching depth we talked about. Yeah. Smith County has it, Upperman has it, as this one is fouled out of play, one and one. That's why those two teams probably are two best chances to have teams in the spring flight mm -hmm. coming up in a couple of months because of that depth. In addition to the great bats that they have, it's the one one. This one swung on and flared over. Wilson has to go and grab it. Now it's a foot race, and Alec Wilson will win it by half a step. For the second out, and rookie Allison now starting to work quickly here through two and two-thirds. He's had to test out that knee a few times today. Right, it's good as new. He went to one of the best doctors in the country down in Alabama. Just listen to that wind, by the way. It is whipping. And Justin Fallon put that ball into the slipstream of it. You know when you're flying back from the West Coast, you can go a lot faster? <laughs> yeah. That's what happened on that baseball. It yes. just, number one, he crushed it. It was out at any ballpark in America. Look at, look at the dirt. As this one is ripped over and Yano ranges over, Fields done an awkward hop, loads up, and that's a quick one, two, three inning for rookie Allison and the upper men defense. They are now churning along here, looking for victory number four on the district slate. But first, before we go to break, we got caught up in all the excitement in this building. It's time for the answer to the trivia question. Who was the youngest player to win an MVP award in the MLB, AL or NL? Bryce Harper, Vita Blue, Johnny Bench, or Stan Musial? Okay, so... You said it's the hard question, so I'm wrong, but I have no clues outside of sacking myself out. I thought it was Bryce Harper. Nope. Vita Blue, 22 years old. He also won the Cy Young back in 1971. So Bryce Harper, was he maybe the National League MVP for the youngest ever National League MVP? Well, that's a, that's any MVP. Right. So, any MVP. But maybe that guy was American League. No, no, no. This is, this is I can't believe what I'm saying. Track with me. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where our conversations are like. Track with me. Okay. 
he's younger than Bryce Harper was. But yes. was he younger in the American League? And so what I'm remembering is when Bryce Harper became the youngest ever NL MVP. Gotcha. That could have been. Very that's well what been. I'm thinking. Maybe. Well and I may be very wrong. Somebody's about to fact check me in the comment <laughs> section. But that's okay. As we head into the fourth inning, Upper Men's lead is 10-0. And they are looking to add on to it. Do up in this half inning is going to be Juju Yano, Carson Shoup, and rookie Allison. Wyatt Dilt back to work on the mound. And I know the home run happened, but he's stabilized things a little bit here. It was four runs, four runs, now just two since then since he's checked in. Yeah, it's just one swing of the bat. And, of course, it came with Kane Shanks again on the base path and then a big swing there. And you, you felt like we, we kind of said it to each other as this just this day earlier on today, the wind is blowing. And, man, when we get to the park today, depending on where this wind is blowing to, there may be some deep flies out there. And we have absolutely seen those so far tonight. Fallon absolutely put one heck of a charge into that baseball that uh, it may have just now landed. I mean, he is, he, you said it, the first one he hit this season was about three-quarters of the way up that light pole in left center at 345. This one was closer down the foul line, but it was... It, he hit it harder. Yeah, he did, I, I, 100%. It was unbelievable. Yeah. I, I mean, I really hope somebody goes and finds that baseball and we know where it landed because I want to track how far that ball yeah. went. That was unbelievable. <laughs> I think we did that with an... We did. Eli Huddleston, Eli Huddleston hit one over the berm last year. <laughs> I think we got it like 435 is what we ended up thinking that, that one was. And that was in that range. Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> yeah, the wind is system with an the already wind. crushed ball. <laughs> it's like when you step up to a par five with a wide open fairway and just, and just slice it into the neighborhood on the right. Oh, different well, experiences. <laughs> Standing in here is Juju Yano for his third plate appearance. He's reached in both so far, both walks, and he has scored a couple of runs. The first pitch misses outside for ball one, and something this Upperman team has done in this game is made these pitchers work. They've had to throw a lot of pitches, combined over 100 so far through three in less than a third innings. Yeah, it's been really impressive through three innings and 100 pitches thrown. Yano puts a big swing on that one. Is Now, once you see one go out, Everybody wants to hit one in a 10 nothing game. So you're going to see some big hacks. Well, the that's the thing, too. You, you already know not that you have the game one. You still have to play good defense. You still have to get the pitches across. But you can be pretty aggressive because you're up by that 10-0 to score. This pitch by, is swung on by Yano and set foul out of play. One ball, two strikes for Wyatt Diltz. And Derek Allen says Tater is here. Tyler Jarrett is in the stream potentially. He's watching in silence, so I'm calling him out. <laughs> Come along with us. I've seen Eli Huddleston tuning in, watching in silence a little bit tonight. I got a big uh, series coming up. I got a big game tomorrow against Tennessee. Coach Bragg has got them trending in the right direction again. Surprise, surprise. There's a 2-2 count here to Juju Yon after that one missed low. For Sparta, again, this is, and really, let's just call a spade a spade, for every seven AAA team, this is going to be your outlier series. They, yes. they, it's about battling like they did in the series with the Cavs, splitting that one. They'll try to do similar things against all the other teams in this district. We mentioned Livingston Academy. Good start. They're up to 3-0. and They're going to take their best crack, especially with Carson Parrott on the mound against this Upperman team. But right now, 20 games in a row in this district, Upperman's won straight. It's evident who the top dog is. That's not the, the measuring stick right now in this district. Yeah, I mean, you always want to get that top two seed going into the district tournament to try to get that by. And the 2-2, two -two, that one bounces in. What did we see last year, right? Livingston, they were the team that got on that run. They weren't able to knock off Upperman, but they were able to beat these other right. teams and just tick their way closer and closer towards getting to that sub-state round. You do not have to beat this Upperman nope. team to get even to the state tournament. It would help a lot. As the 3-2 pitch, mm. that one gets it, and that hit Foul the ball. bat of Juju Yano. <laughs> it was going to be ball four or hit him, and instead it hit the top of the bat, and so it'll be another 3-2 count. That's one of those where you're flexing your back so hard, but then you realize, oh, the bat's still there, so you try to bring it down at the last second because you're expecting it to hit you in the middle of the back, and it was so far behind him that it caught the barrel. Get out of jail free card for Wyatt Dilt, see yeah. what he can do with it here. 3-2 payoff pitch coming in. That one misses away ball four, and Yano has walked three times so far. He'll head the first. And Carson Shoup, who has a three RBIs on the day already with a single and a walk. So it's Golden Sombrero for four strikeouts at the plate. What is it for four walks? I think it's new walking shoes. Golden Cowboy boots? I don't think it's a thing. I don't think it happens very often. It's a Sombrero for strikeouts. That's true. Yano takes a healthy lead over there at first. He's always a threat to steal. He stays put now as that one bounces away, and now he will take on the wild pitch, move over to second, and takes a big looping 
lead around second before retreating there. And it's just becoming a carousel out there right now for Upperman offensively. They're going to do that to a lot of teams. Yep. But again, we said it in that first game for White County, really competitive. Absolutely. And uh, that's a credit to Coach Thompson, what he can do with this team. 1-0 ripped by Shoup over to Pionki, who fields it cleanly, loads up and makes an accurate heavy throw over to first for the first out. The runner Yano advances to third. It'll bring up rookie Allison. He's an RBI sack flying a walk so far today. He's been productive to help, helping himself out in the, on the mound. And if, if you're Upperman and you can throw rookie Allison for five innings and you walk out of here only using three pitchers today and feel really fresh going into Thursday. I think the only question you would have is do you want to put Justin Fallon yeah, out just there to keep, to keep him, him loose? Yeah. Because you, you've had work for everybody recently besides him, and he's two, if not right there at three in their rotation. And of course, they're going to be throwing bullpens, but there's nothing like the live action. And it won't surprise me at all. I don't know this. I haven't talked to Coach Shanks. If your starter on Thursday against Coleman out of Alabama at 7 o'clock is Justin Fallon on the mound, but you could still throw him for a couple of innings here on a Monday night and keep him fresh. As Coach Thompson comes in and gives some new baseballs and has some word with the home plate umpire. It's an 0 one count to rookie Allison. They're going to turn their attention back into the district and look to bounce back. Depending, of course, this one's not final. As this one swung on by Allison and sent out into left center field. Long way to go for Dykus. He's still ranging, and it gets down. It's going to be an RBI South Willow Auto Clinic double for rookie Allison. And they continue to pour it on as the wind blows the dirt across the infield. It's 11-0 Upperman. They have scored in every half inning so far. Yeah, and you saw that big gust of wind again. It just kind of kept drifting it and making that run a little bit longer for Dykus. Really well hit ball by Allison and a really good game so far for rookie Allison too. Yeah, on a normal night, that's probably a routine fly ball yes. in the center field, yeah. but not tonight as it carries it left. And we'll remind you, tonight's broadcast is presented by Nick's Restaurant. Nick's Restaurant's been family-owned and operated in the Upper Cumberland for over 50 years. Delicious prime ribs, steak, seafood. As this one is sent way up into the air, could be a tough play again. Into the wind it goes, ranging back Pionki. Now Dykus is there, and it gets down again. Runner heading over to third. Here comes the throw, sliding in in time is Shoop. And we'll see how that one is scored. Green. green. Pardon me. Green. He's checked in. It's Braden Green who's running for rookie Allison, and I think that's going to be rolled a single. That's just a really tough play as it flares out into the Bermuda Triangle, and now Coach Thompson comes out and wants to have a word, and maybe time for another change here for the Warriors. Yeah, and you mentioned the Bermuda Triangle. Makes it even tougher when that wind is just gusting like it is right now. And he's looking to the dugout and looks like we will have a new pitcher coming on. It's time for a Hall Sports and Outdoors call to the bullpen for the White County Warriors. New pitcher when we come back. Upperman's lead is 11-0, and they're looking for more. Don't go anywhere. From the sports field to the hunting field, our friends at Hall Sports and Outdoors can outfit anyone. Located in the heart of Jamestown at 207 South Main Street, Hall Sports and Outdoors carries everything from kayaks, fishing gear, and camo to guns and ammo. With top brands such as Columbia, Timberland, Under Armour, Asics, and much more, nobody can top their selection. Need some custom gear for your team? They also offer uniforms, gear, and custom embroidery. Stop by and see them at 207 South Main Street in Jamestown. Hall Sports and Outdoors, proud sponsor of this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Loading the kids in the car. Brokering peace in the back seat. Mastering the snack handoff without even looking. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. We work with independent agents who keep insurance simple so you can worry about more important things like figuring out what's growing in that cup holder. That's simple human sense. Visit SwallowsInsurance.com or call us today, 931-526-4025. Protecting your future, it's what we do. Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate just listed this new construction home located in the Brookstone subdivision. With 2,075 square feet, three bedrooms, and large walk-in closets, the main level primary bedroom has one of the best features ever. In addition to the hallway access, you could access the laundry room through the closet in the bedroom. The kitchen also features an island, a pantry, and stainless steel appliances. All cabinets throughout the house are soft clothes and have granite countertops. For more information, call Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate at 931-979-7145 or 931-526-9581. Always ask for Sonia Brown. Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. 
The Hall of Sports and Outdoors call to the bullpen for the White County Warriors as they give the ball to the right-handed Preston Pionki. He's going to step in here with runners at the corners for the nine-hole hitter Evan Huddleston. He's 0 for 2 with a ground out and a strikeout. And he's got runners at the corners with just one out and the ever-dangerous Caden Shanks is on deck. Yeah, started the game against Cannon County. Lasted just two innings in that one. Gave up three earned runs, five hits, one strikeout, and no walks. First pitch. Misses nowhere close for a ball, 1-0. Braden Green is the courtesy runner out for rookie Allison. He reached on a double, Allison did. Then at first, it's Carson Holroyd. He singled into no man's land up there, and the wind just took it away from what would have been a routine flyout. Here comes the 1-0 to Huddleston. That one misses low. It's now 2-0, and, and Upperman now has their sight set on one thing, 15. They get to 15. They put a zero on the bottom half, and it is over here in game number two. Regardless, it could be over after five if Sparta's unable to score. The 2-0, that one misses, and now in danger of walking on four pitches is Evan Huddleston with Caden Shanks on deck and then Justin I Fallon in the hole. I was going to say, I guess who's in the hole. Those two uh, have home run power and then some. Maybe more of a, I may jinx it as the 3-0 pitch comes in. That one misses ball. Four Huddleston does walk on four pitches. Because of the wind, it's, gonna be it's more of a Justin Kaden, yeah. Fallon home run yeah. kind of day than Caden Shanks. But Caden Shanks has enough to send it through the wind, over the river, and through the woods uh, yes. if he connects to something here. But Pionki, he's trying to throw strikes right now. And yeah. those all missed pretty uh, far away from the zone. And he's only hit about 68 on the gun so far, so even a little bit slower than what we've seen earlier on in this game, about 75 or so from the rest of the White County pitchers. Usually you'd say red light after a four-pitch walk, but I don't think Caden Shanks ever has a red light. Is the first pitch? Ooh, close but no cigar, 1-0. And, oh. and if you're Tyler Thompson, you're saying, please, that's the one that you need to be a strike. Bases loaded here for the Bees. And maybe the best player in the classification who rips it down the first baseline. And this may be another triple. One run will score. Two runs will score. Shanks rounds first heading for second. And he will pull in with a South Willow Auto Clinic double. And he clears the bases. Three more RBIs for Caden Shanks. It's just a really good piece of hitting. And he's been doing it all game long. And he said it. He might be the Nelson Trophy and screen printing player of the game already. And we're not even towards the end of it yet. But another inning where they have scored four runs. And now one away to see if, well, we'll, we'll see if if they get that run across. But uh, So Green comes around to score. Holroyd scores. Huddleston scores. And here he comes. Justin Fallon, fresh off a two-run bomb to left field. Stands in again this time against Preston Pionki. And by the way, that's 11 RBIs in the season now for Caden Shanks. He has two triples and a double. First pitch swinging here for Fallon. Rips it over towards Pionki at short. He has one throw to make. It's over to first, and he beats him by a step. Shanks advances over to third, so a good job to record the out there. It's a really good throw. It was. He had to go over the top of Caden Shanks, who, if it looked like he was indecisive, he wasn't. He was smartly standing in the way. Right. And now Alec Wilson will try and bring him in, and this is a big one. If he does bring in Caden Shanks, the game would end if White County does not score in the bottom half. If he doesn't, we're going to play a fifth inning no matter what. Yeah, that's right, because it's visiting team, that being Upperman here in this one, being the second game. First pitch into Wilson, misses upstairs for a ball. Wilson's at the plate, Worsing is on deck, and for the third time in four innings, this is the eighth batter wow. to appear at the plate for Upperman. Only nine hits officially, but they have been all over with walks, big hits, extra base hits. For Shanks, mentioning the three extra base hits already for him. As I tally it up quickly here, that puts him up to seven on the season. 2-0 pitch, misses away, it's 3-0, and again, the problem with Upperman, Alec Wilson's a great hitter. You don't want to give him something easy to hit, mm -hmm. but right there is Chris Worsing, who's also leads the team in batting average. Yeah, he's been really good tonight as well. The 3-0 pitch to Wilson, that one is across for a strike at 3-1. That would have been really hard for me to lay off of if I was up there. <laughs> I'll be honest. I wouldn't have laid off of it. I would have had a red line. It wouldn't have mattered. I, I would have been swinging out of my shoes. Yeah, you are kidding. I'm trying to find the jet stream up there. Here comes the 3-1 from Pionki. Preston delivers home, and Wilson does swing on this one. He sends it up into left field, under it, and left, and he mistimed it, and it's down, and it is 15-0 as Wilson rounds first, and he pulls into second. We'll see how that one scored. I think it's going to be an error out there in left field. It does get it to 15, so now Sparta will have to score to extend the game in the bottom half. Chris Worsing will stride in. So an error there. Wilson moves over to second. It's tough out there in left, but... Just looked like he totally missed time to jump for it. 
Yeah, pinch runner on. Uh, yeah, pinch Unless runner he's going to come on to pitch as well. He could, could be why. Well, you could also pinch, pinch runner, runner on, yeah. once, and then he can go back out yeah. there in Tennessee high school baseball. Caden Holroyd going to go out and run. And now also Wes Shanks wants to get everybody involved as it's 15-0 to in favor of the Bees. Shanks came across to score for the fourth time in four innings. Caden Shanks scored a run. First pitch in to Chris Worsing, missed low. The ball was also across hammered, for a by the way. Yeah, it was. Off the bat, I thought I had a chance to get yeah. out of here, but it didn't quite get high enough didn't to quite catch that catch win. the jet stream. 0-1 count here. That pitch ripped Ooh. up the middle. Caden Holroyd going to test him in center field, and never mind. He has the stop sign up, so it'll be a single there for Chris Worsing, who has now reached for the third time. And that's one where you, you throw, and you're kind of scared to see it come right back at you. You hit it so hard. And now they're going to have a change. Wes Shank's going to come out, and I wonder if it's another runner here or if it's going to be a pinch hitter. And it, now as you're up 15-0, you can give people ABs. You want right. to give them an opportunity to come up and hit and run. You saw Shoop Caden is Holroyd standing out there, out there but... Shoop was on, on deck. deck. Coming up after Juju Yano, who is the scheduled batter. So Caden Holroyd's at third. And there's going to be a big round of applause as we're going to have a pinch hitter checking in here for the Bees. Aiden Wyatt going to get an opportunity, and the crowd loves this. As he's got runners at the corners with two out. And it's going to hit him right in the back. <laughs> so he gets one opportunity. <laughs> and the pitch comes in and hits him. And so he does his job. And the bases are loaded here for Carson Shoup, who's going to stride in with the pads on. And he's just now realizing that he's got the, the pads on here. And we're going to fix the camera real quick. But don't can, worry. We're can, not... can you hit with those on? I mean, technically. You could technically, but it would slow you down in a major, major way. We've got runners at every base here for Upperman. They've already about five across in this half inning, and now Wes Shanks is going to say, no, I don't think you're going to hit. Somebody else is going to get to <laughs> check in and send the crowd into another frenzy. They're emptying out the bench right now at 15-0. to zero. And let's see if Collier Bush is going to get an opportunity to bat for the first time this year. Who else it's going to be? Noah Gentry getting an opportunity, I believe, for the first time to come in and bat. So Noah Gentry with the bases loaded. Hit a grand slam, young man. <laughs> I love the kids who don't usually get ABs early on in the year to try to do something. As that pitch for Bianchi is waved at, foul tipped, 0-1. Bases loaded here for Upperman. It's already been a huge inning. Now they're clear of the run rule if they put a zero up in the bottom half. Well, of course, no JV game as well, so getting them some yeah, hacks. They were supposed to be, and then, of course, they moved it up. This one swung on by Gentry. Third baseman ranges over, makes the play, throws over to first in time for the out to retire the side, but not before. Another big number on the scoreboard for the Bees. After three and a half innings, it is Upperman 15, Sparta 0. Coming to this game, presented by Nick's Restaurant on the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. <laughs> Upperman looking to win their 21st straight District 7 AAA game. 
as they lead 15 to zero. A zero on the scoreboard of this half inning would end it. Sparta, they fought valiantly in game number one. Two nothing, just couldn't get the bats working against Caden Shanks and Wyatt Curtis. But here in game number two, it has been all upperman. Rookie Allison pitching a gem on the mound. He's back there trying to close it out here in inning number four. Only one change in the field for the Bees. Wyatt Curtis checking in. He's going to be out in right. But it is Eli Smith who is the batter you would want with the bat in your hands if you're Sparta to try and extend this game to open up the bottom half of the fourth. It is a doubleheader, which is why White County is the home team here in game number two as the first pitch misses low and outside. Rookie Allison's thrown just 40 pitches so far here. It's got to be tough for him, too, because every single inning he's had a long wait there in the dugout. Good thing is he's hitting, so he's still up moving around. As that one misses away and quickly but head 2-0 goes Smith. He knows how to work the count. This one flared out in the right field. And Wyatt Curtis fresh in. He's got work. No chance to get to that one. And it's a leadoff single for Eli Smith. Sparta threatening to extend the game here. Will Thomas will stride in trying to do some damage. Of course, they got to get at least one run on to extend it to this next fifth inning. And then after that, it's 10 anyways. So, uh, But uh, for Sparta, trying to keep their fighting chances alive if they can. So they need six in the next two combined yes. innings to extend this one. But one immediately. As the first pitch in, that sidearm misses away. And you mentioned that long layoff is tough on a pitcher as it gets colder and colder. Yeah, especially with the way the wind is blowing. It's really hard to stay warm. 1-0 there. He went to the breaking ball. Didn't quite get it to catch the zone, and it's 2-0. He's looking for one of those calls now that uh, Dilt's got earlier on. <laughs> here comes the 2-0. That one swung on and laced over. Back-to-back -back singles here for White County. And Smith going to get the stop sign, so runners at first and second with nobody out. And it'll bring up Cole Gentry, the designated hitter. He's reached on an error so far. Hard hit ball over to short. He strides in here for A.B. number two. Another doubleheader going on is Smith County taking on Jackson County up 20-0. to zero Goodness. In that one over there. That's in the second, Almost after the second. About to get to 8-0. First pitch in from Allison. Misses 1-0. Runners at first and second, nobody out. One run across, extends the game for White County. We will be doing some Owls baseball on Friday. Against Livingston, as this one sent over towards Ricky Allison, he's going to try to turn two. Throws to second for one. The throw to first is a great throw, but not in time. So rule that one a fielder's choice, and now the game extending run is 90 feet away for White County. As Trenton Wilson will strut in, he's 0 for 1 with a ground out. Apparently some new updates at that field at Smith County. Of course, new head coach as well. But a really good team that, like you said, about to improve to 8 0 on the season. That should be a good game. That's one should of the be. best teams Smith County's placed. It's also probably the, the best team that Livingston Academy has mm -hmm. faced on Friday night. Runners at the corners here for Sparta. First pitch misses inside and gets away from shoot, but it takes a huge bounce. He throws over to Allison, who tags in time. Now the throw behind the runner at second. Not quite in time as it gets away. But now that's the second out, and all of a sudden, Sparta down to their final out. There is no padding on that backstop. It took a huge hop back to Carson Shoup. And now the Warriors have to battle with a runner in scoring position in the form of Cole Gentry and Trenton Wilson representing their final out. Yeah, you'll see that at some ballparks where there is that padding there to kind of deaden it, it's usually on the shorter ones. And now one and one is... You know, that's exactly right. You have such a big backstop here, it'd be a humongous Kinda disadvantage <laughs> if you, there was a big pad back there. One and one with two outs. 50 pitches for rookie Allison. They'll allow just three hits, two of which have come in this inning. The one one, this one swung on. He jumps up and tips it. Shanks is there, loads up. Caden Shanks caps it off with a nice play. And that should do it tonight here in Baxter. 15 0. No, we're going to keep playing. All right, one more inning. All right, we're going to play one more inning. All right, go to the, to the top of the fifth inning. It's 15 to 0. As that was a great play by Caden Shanks. It really was. Yeah, it was a, that was a great play by Shanks. And especially after he's had a couple of ground balls earlier today that uh, he hadn't been able to handle that one. A tough play, needs to make a good throw, throws it on a line over there to first base and able to get it going. And going to be a chance here for the Bees as well to get some more of those batters in there that haven't gotten in that bat. Yeah, it looks like Brayden Green might be leading off this inning. 15-0 Upperman out in front. All right, they got to change that back. That's a horrific rule. 15 after three. We need to go home. <laughs> I'll well, die the, on that hill. The umpire is over talking to Baxter. And now we again we did have a game last week. 
between Upperman and Stone Memorial softball that ended after the fifth, well, and it was nine to different. zero. Softball's different. Yeah, that was weird. It was really At weird. nine. <laughs> We're coming back for the sixth inning, and it finished, and uh, we said, okay. Back to work, or there's going to be a new pitcher on the mound here for White County, so we will take a quick break and have a Hall Sports Outdoors call the bullpen when we come back. Don't go anywhere. From the sports field to the hunting field, our friends at Hall Sports and Outdoors can outfit anyone. Located in the heart of Jamestown at 207 South Main Street, Hall Sports and Outdoors carries everything from kayaks, fishing gear, and camo to guns and ammo. With top brands such as Columbia, Timberland, Under Armour, Asics, and much more, nobody can top their selection. Need some custom gear for your team? They also offer uniforms, gear, and custom embroidery. Stop by and see them at 207 South Main Street in Jamestown. Hall Sports and Outdoors. Proud sponsor of this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Loading the kids in the car. Brokering peace in the back seat. Mastering the snack handoff without even looking. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. We work with independent agents who keep insurance simple, so you can worry about more important things, like figuring out what's growing in that cup holder. That's simple human sense. Visit SwallowsInsurance.com or call us today, 931-526-4025. Protecting your future. Hall Sports and Outdoors call to the bullpen here for White County. Cole Gentry is... My apologies. you got to play five innings, although I'm going to go back and pull because I promise you I've called games that have ended <laughs> after three with a 15-run lead. The first pitch from Gentry of the season. This is his first appearance. Comes into Braden Green, who's pinch hitting here in spot number seven in this upper mint order in place of rookie Allison. Braden Green, he's been in and out of the order so far at times this year. Utility player for him, and he puts a good swing on this one into right field. That one is still tailing back way back, and it's going to get down. Braden Green rounds first, heading in for second. Here comes the throw. It's not in time. He will slide in for a layoff. South Willow Auto Clinic double. Doesn't matter who's at the plate right now for Upperman. They're hitting the cover and off the baseball. Uh, absolutely. And uh, getting uh, some of these younger guys some chances, some of the JV guys that normally aren't going to get hits here in the varsity game or at least opportunities in the varsity game. And no JV game tonight, so a chance to put them in there. And now Wyatt Curtis gets a go at the plate. So Wyatt Curtis gets an opportunity here in the eighth spot. We're in the top of the fifth inning. He flares this one over to left field, but it's going to go foul. Curtis, he's done a little bit of everything so far today. Yeah. He, he's playing in right field. He's pitched back in game number one. A good pitched strong well. two innings. Yeah. Retired all six batters that he faced, and now he gets an A-B. First pitch coming in, or second pitch at the A-B, rather, to, from Gentry to Curtis. Misses for a ball, one and one. One and one pitch coming in. There's that breaking ball. It's a good pitch, but it doesn't quite get the call. Two and one. Here to Wyatt Curtis. Then it's the spot of Evan Huddleston. They're going to run out of pinch hitters eventually. <laughs> so we'll see what they do. There's the two one. Kicks and deals by Gentry. Curtis almost offered to that one, but it misses upstairs. Three and one. White County's going to get a fun battle. They're actually off until Saturday, and then we'll take on York on Saturday. Three one pitch that one called strike and we can run full at three and two. Like Collier Bush standing in the on deck circle. Oh, Collier Bush going to get an A B now I believe for the first time this season. He of course came from the basketball team so a little bit of a late start the three two misses low and outside ball forward Wyatt Curtis works a walk and the first two batters in the order here in this inning have reached base. Runners at first and second for Collier Bush. Pinch hitting. So now we have one, two, three, four, five straight pinch hitters for Upperman. And again, with a lead like this, in a game like this, you want everybody to get an A-B. No JV game tonight. So you get everybody some work. Gentry, another one of those players getting an opportunity on the mound. He's got some decent stuff, and that time you get a 15 nothing strike call. 1-0. Oh. <laughs> or 0-1, oh rather. That was, uh, that was out there and up there. <laughs> That's quite okay. Here comes the 0-1 home from Gentry. B-1 
Big swing for Bush and tips it 0-2. I was going to say, you better be swinging if you're up there. Absolutely. Put one over the fence. Everybody. How fun would that be? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you want to see a place go bananas? <laughs> Collier Bush, good athlete. Comes the 0-2 home. Big kick. That breaking ball misses outside. One and two. It moved about two feet, though. Well, it's something to talk about with how you've seen these players hit. Kind of more of a JV game happening at this point. They're used to seeing the slower velocities, right? Some of those talked about how slowing that velocity down can hurt you as the one two misses away. Two and two, you're more timed up. It's all yeah. This is a timing sport at the plate, so you're more timed up if you're facing more guys pitching in the 70s. He's throwing right out about 70. They're on the fastball, so yeah, you said it. These guys are kind of used to seeing that. It helps them out. And some more reps. The 2-2, two, two, big swing and a miss on that one for Birdie's Lounge. Strikeout for Noah Gentry. King Shanks is not a JV player. Kyle Gentry, my apologies. Cole Gentry, I can't read my own handwriting. Cole Gentry, the Birdie's Lounge Cole, strikeout. Correct. Uh, yeah, and for Cole Gentry, now the equation has changed uh, so slightly as Caden Shanks will stride in in the middle of one of the more impressive days at the plate I've seen. He has two triples, a double three RBIs, and four runs scored. He has reached in all four innings so far. Now in inning number five, he gets another A-B. First pitch, breaking ball, and this is upstairs, 1-0. and oh. And if you're Kane Shanks, you're probably thinking home run derby right now, trying yeah. to send something a long, long way. Uh, you do not have to ask me who the Nelson Trophy and screen yeah, pitching player is going to be. Yeah, we're on the same page on that one. He's going to go two for two tonight. Runners at first and second now with one out after Gentry got the punch out. Here comes the 1-0. Fastball, and he crushed it to right field. If it stays fair, it drops just in front of the fence at the warning track, and the runners got delayed, so Shanks is going to have to wait at first base, and it'll be the bases loaded and the hardest hit single you've seen in years as that one was hit 323 <laughs> feet say. instead of the 325, and on a normal night, that is way out of here, but he got hampered by the wind, and now Justin Fallon is going to stride in. 323-foot single. <laughs> And, yeah, the, the runners kind of had to stay where they were because the right fielder had a chance to catch that ball, just overran it a little bit because the wind kept bringing it back in. That probably actually made it out close to over the fence and then came back in with this with as hard as it is blowing because it is blowing straight across from first to third now. Well, now Gentry has to deal with Justin Fallon, who already has a two-run home run today. First pitch swinging. <gasps> yeah. Um, that's 0-1, and he may do that two more times because why not at this point? That was a heavy cut. It's either going to be a home run or a strikeout, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready. Yeah. Here comes Mark McGuire's at the point. <laughs> Adam Dunn. The base is loaded. He swings at this one and fouls it off. 0-2. Oh and, and if I'm Gentry, if I'm Coach Thompson with the pitch com, throw one in the dirt. Owen oh 2 Gentry against Fallon. Kicks and deals. That one gets away, and the runners are going to stay where they are. And Coach, that's, Coach yeah, Shanks that's, told him to. There's, yeah. there's no reason yeah. at that point with a 15 nothing game in the fifth to take that as it's 1-2. and two. That's good, tremendous sportsmanship yes. right there. That's the thing for White County. You can't take anything away from them, especially as well as they played no. in that first game. Well, that was we, one heck of a baseball game. We saw this a lot last year. Game yep. ones were pretty tight and games two were not. Now it's a little flip because, of course, it was usually Huddleston in game two last year, but Rookie Allison's pitched really well. As the 0-2 Fallon puts a big swing on this one and sends it into foul territory, it's going to get out of play, and we'll do it again. It is one and two, the count. Last call for concession. Well, it's rare when we get to say ball game over three times in one day, but we're going to get to do it because I jumped the gun on the last one. <laughs> By the way, I found an article from 2021 talking about the 15 runs after three innings run rule. So I know I wasn't totally crazy. In what state? In this state. Because oh, okay. the one, two comes home. That one, close, but no cigar, two and two. And it does miss. The umpire's a better man than me, though, because that would have been strike three called. <laughs> Instead, it's two and two. Bases loaded here. Cole Gentry. Kicks and deals. Fallon loads up and sends this one into right field. Runner tagging up at third and sliding in to grab it. This is going to be an RBI for Justin Fallon on a sacrifice fly. 
And the lead is up to 16 to 0 as Braden Green comes across to score. Alec Wilson going to stride back in here. Oh, good piece of batting there for Justin Fallon. Of course, you still want to work on your kind of situational hitting. Able to send it out there. Braden Green able to come around to score. That is a four RBI day for Justin Fallon in just five innings of work. Runs his total up to eight on the campaign. And all of a sudden, those batting averages are really ticking up for the Bees. Uh, yep. Alec Wilson with runners at first and second. When I get his first home run with a new knee, is Gentry. He's not pitching poorly at all out there. He's mixing them up. He's just in a tough spot here with the offense rolling downhill. Yeah. Got a couple of outs. He's been around the strike zone so far. Check back. Here comes the 1-0 to Wilson. He swings at this one, chops it, foul down the third baseline, 1-1. One and one. And it's so hard, obviously, to sit back on these pitchers as well that are a little bit slower than what they're used to. But obviously they've kind of seen them throughout this night tonight, both in the first game and in the second game, so they've been able to time them up a little bit. There's apparently storms in Nashville, so we could zip on ahead real quick here as it's one and one with two outs. I think we'll be okay. All right. Well, we'll be fine. As the pitch comes in, Wilson swings at this one, rips it right at the second baseman who fields it on a knee for the third out. The Bees add one more. Last chance for the Warriors when we come back. It's 16-0. Coverage of tonight's game is presented by Nick's Restaurant on the Frontier Chevy, UCR Media Network. Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing is proud to support student athletes and athletic departments throughout the Upper Cumberland. They're also proud to sponsor the Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing Player of the Game on this broadcast. From trophies to t-shirts, they can do it all. Stop by and see them at 120 Circle Drive in Allgood or give them a call at 931-537-9559. Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing is proud to sponsor this broadcast on UCR Media Network. Frontier Chevrolet is ready to get you into your next vehicle and are proud to offer a lifetime powertrain warranty on nearly all vehicles below 80,000 miles. View inventory online at www.caseychevy.com, including the brand new Chevy Trax and Traverse. Or stop in at 2350 Cookville Highway today. Remember, don't buy till you see Jason Fye. I'm looking for someone who can keep me comfortable, stay here for the long run, and definitely not high maintenance. Not right. Absolutely not. This one looks perfect. Find your perfect match with Hiller. Get a free UV light with select new HVAC systems, 50% off a descaler with new tankless water heaters, or free surge protection with a new whole home generator. I like that one too. Welcome back. Changes all over the place defensively for the Upperman Bees. Headlined by a Hall Sports and Outdoors call to the bullpen for Upperman as they're going to give the ball to the junior right-hander Alec Wilson. Tasked with finishing this one off, barring a huge oh. bottom of the fifth for the Bee, or for the Warriors. This game will end on the run rule at the conclusion of this inning. But Alec Wilson, he's making his fourth appearance. He started one game so far. He's allowed 11 hits, seven runs. All of them earned six walks, four strikeouts, a 5.07 ERA. He pitched really well against Friendship Christian. Just had a rocky fourth inning. They actually worked through a bases loaded jam in. And that's tweaked those stats just a little bit. For the most part, though, he's had some good stuff here. And nothing, a quick shutdown inning can't go to boost, but in his way is going to be 8-9-1 in the White County lineup, led off by Caden Sievers. First pitch of the inning is a fastball taken for called strike one on the outside corner. 79. Keep your eyes on UpperCumberlandReporter.com for the latest coverage of high school sports throughout the area. We don't anticipate streams tomorrow due to the weather, but who knows what could happen. And then, of course, starting on Thursday, we will be in Hoover, Alabama. As the Bees take part in a big classic out there, as this pitch misses outside one and one. One game on Thursday night against Coleman out of Alabama at 7 o'clock. Two games on Friday and another on Saturday. As that pitch catches that part of the zone and the count goes to one and two. Is that Eastern time down there? It is not. It's Birmingham area. So we're actually going a little bit west. Does here. Here comes the one-two pitch home. That one called strike three. A birdies lounge strikeout. Good pitch by Alec Wilson, and that is a 16 to nothing call right there on the outside corner with yeah. a fastball. Hey, benefit of the doubt. Sam Dykus kind of trot in here, and now we're moving at a quick pace. First pitch swung on and missed for strike one for Wilson. Mentioned a quick shutdown inning would be good just statistically. He's had good stuff, mm -hmm. and also get back. He's working quick, too. Wink on he is. He works methodically as it's one and one. Most of these upper mid hitter pitchers, they go pretty quick out there. 
One one fastball waved at and missed quickly ahead one and two. And I think these are challenge fastballs from Alec Wilson daring you to try to catch up quickly back to work with a one and two. This one is flared up into the air, drifting towards no man's land. Long way for the second baseman who lays out for it. It was Yano who nearly made the catch, but he couldn't quite get there. And it's going to be a one out single for Sam Dykus. That was a pretty, pretty good piece of hitting. Obviously, you're just going up there, you're swinging and. Able to get it over there, kind of mess with the wind. Yano gave a really good chase on to it, just couldn't quite get there. Couldn't, didn't get enough help from the wind to blow it back to him. Yeah, that was almost the catch of the year. He got closer to that than he had any right to. Is Austin Pionki going to step in here? He's got a runner at first, one out. Wyatt Curtis is at first. That's one of the changes. Braden Green is out there as well. And right. He's in right field. Collier Bush in left. Collier Bush and left. Everything else stays the same to our eyes. It's 1-0. and Rookie Allison, he's getting to take a breather. He worked a lot behind the plate in game number one. He worked on the mound, throwing four innings of shutout ball. The 1-0 misses, and now quickly 2-0. and Ahead in the count goes Austin Pionki, and he's got a runner at first, just trying to build some strong ABs and string them together here as that one misses upstairs. And ahead 3-0. and was in the strike zone early on. Now gotten away from it just a little bit. Trying to get back in there. Good batter at the plate though in Pianchi as well. Wilson delivers home. Called a strike. Thought it was going to be ball four, but he has to retreat back now at three and one. There is a reported as this one is Sent straight up into the air. Carson Shoup trying to find it. It's drifting, and he never saw it as it fell into foul territory. And the count runs full at three and two. So they uh, have called off the conclusion after three innings between Smith County and Jackson County due to, quote, lightning in the area. <laughs> there um, is not lightning within 50 is, miles. There is no lightning in Gainesboro, the Gainesboro, Tennessee. Are they in Carthage tonight? Either way. No, they're in Gainesboro. Yeah, there's definitely not lightning in the area of Gainesboro yet. There will be in a couple of hours, but it's it's itching. It's right at the line of Carthage. It's a convenient. It's a strong win for Smith County as this one is barreled out in the left field, and that's going to get down for a base hit by Austin Pionki. A good three-two hit. As there's runners at first and second here for the Sparta Warriors. Case and Seal going to stride in. He reached in an error in the first and grounded out to the first base in the third. B's going to try to get out of here. Maybe a game-ending double play. And at middle infield, they certainly have turned their fair share of them over the past three seasons. And Juju Yano and Caden Shanks on turn a tough couple in Lebanon. As the first pitch is a fastball that misses away, 1-0. 14 pitches into this relief outing for Alec Wilson. Delivers home the 1-0. This one is swung on, rolled over towards Shanks. He fields, throws to Yano for one. No throw to first as he'll hang on to it, so rule that one a fielder's choice. And the Warriors down to their final out tonight. It'll bring up Jack Everett. Yeah, of course, for the Warriors, got to get at least six if they want to extend this, so. Like you said, Tall down task. to their final out. Tall task as Dykus moves over to third. Seal will reach first on the fielder's choice. Everett now. Trying to extend this ball game. He's one for two with a single and a ground out. Well, Upperman seeing if they can't walk out of here with a couple of shutouts, too. First pitch, fastball. Close, but no cigar. One and oh. Wilson checks down. Now the one oh. This one's sent up into the air. The wind's going to keep it into foul territory. Shoop gives chase and Worsing looked up at it and wasn't sure if Shoop was going, so it's just going to be an awkward strike one. Yeah, that's going to be a really tough play for Shoop to make. Worse, he's able to come on to that. And he, yeah. you could see he kind of paused for just a little bit and that little hesitation. He probably could have got there. And I think he saw Shoop kind of barreling in there and kind of scared him just yeah, a little bit at the last second. Saying, mind my mind and in the ball game. Instead, it's one and one with two outs, runners at the corners. Wilson delivers home. That's a good pitch. Waved at and missed it. Now the Warriors down to their final strike tonight. Everett trying to battle. Wilson kicks and deals. The one, two, swung on and missed. The birdies lounge strikeout, and now the ball game is over. Final score, Upperman 16, Sparta 0. The Bees sweep the district series here against White County. A 2-0 winner earlier, 16-0 in game number two, a dominant effort.
in game two out of the upper men offense. They were in rhythm early. Rookie Allison and Alec Wilson closed the door on the mound. Yeah, 13 hits in the game in this one and just five innings of action for the Bees who now improved to 7-3 and three on the season. And he kind of looked at that record early on just because of the outings that they had down in Georgia uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And he said, oh, this looks a little bit weird, but now they're 7-3 and three, and that's looking more like how the Upperman Bees are used to looking, at least in the record department. Got a good tough nose victory in game number one, continued that hitting right off the bat in game number two, and now sitting comfortably atop the standings at 4-0 and 7 AAA. This is the South Willow Auto Clinic postgame show. The South Willow Auto Clinic are your hometown auto doctors. We already mentioned it, but the Nelson Trophy and screen printing player of the game for the second time today, Jacob? Caden Shanks. Caden Shanks, without a doubt. He had two accounted triples. For, accounted for seven of the 16 runs. That's pretty impressive. He had a couple of triples, a double as well, and a tip of the cap, though. To the monumental uh, yeah. moonshot. He was right behind him. From Justin <laughs> Fallon. But Caden Shanks goes two for two today as the Nelson Trophy and screen printing player of the game. The Bees do improve to seven on and three on the year with the victory. Sparta falls to three and eight, eight on the campaign. We'll remind you to keep your eyes on uppercomelandreporter.com for the latest coverage of high school sports throughout the area. For Upperman, we will be back with them on Thursday. Hoover, Alabama as they take on Cullum out of Alabama with a 7 o'clock first pitch live on the main UCR Facebook page and YouTube channel. Then two games on Friday and another on Saturday. Once again, live from Hoover on the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. Thank you so much to Nick's Restaurant for being the presenting sponsor of Upperman Baseball all season long here on UCR. Much more baseball action to come throughout the week. Maybe a little softball mixed in as well. We'll have to wait and see. Keep your eyes on our Facebook page, Instagram, and Twitter feed for more information on upcoming broadcast. Final score tonight, game number one goes to the Bees, 2-0. to zero. Game number two, 16 to nothing. I'm Noah McKay for Jacob Vincent to my right and everybody at UCR. Have a great night, everybody.